What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Omen Z, and we back with another What If, and this What If is going to be What If Goku Was Born in Elite Saiyan. For this What If, I'm going to make Goku a young than Vegeta, so King Vegeta will know of Goku's existence and overwhelming power from birth. Every Saiyan child is in the chamber where the babies are held, and baby Goku is across from baby Broly and baby Vegeta. King Vegeta goes to visit the prince and talks to the doctors until he feels a rise of ki from two crying babies one of the other babies stop crying and his power goes back down but the other one keeps crying and his power is shaking the room king vegeta runs towards the baby and asks the doctor the name of the sand child and who's the father the king gets told that the baby name is broly and the father name is Paragus. and king vegeta becomes angry and also wants to know who's the baby from the other side and the doctor tells him that that's Bardock's younger son and that Bardock also has another child there too, but he isn't as strong as the younger child. The king scoffs when he finds out Kakarot power is near the princess, but since the princess is still higher than his, he lets his slide, but takes note that Bardock's son may be a threat to his son in the future. Paragus congratulates Bardock on the birth of his two elite sons. And Bardock thanks him. And this is what if Bardock and Paragus are good friends and they knew each other from like way back when they fought together during missions. And Bardock is aware of Broly's high power and Kakarot's fluctuating power. But soon Broly is exiled and Bardock tells Paragus he'll find them. But if he doesn't, then his son Kakarot will. Paragus nods and then runs off to his ship to rush to Planet Vampa to catch up with Broly. Due to Goku growing up with his parents... It helps him become more of a mellow saiyan and not such a prideful brute like Nappa, Raditz, or Vegeta, or any of the other saiyans. As Goku is born an elite saiyan, he's a prodigy among prodigies. He always humbles Raditz whenever they train by swiftly knocking Raditz out whenever he feels like he has the upper hand on Goku. Goku never holds back in this one because of his father's training. When Goku and Bardock trains, Goku always turns into a different bloodthirsty battle freak when he fights someone who's stronger than him. During their training, Bardock tries to underkick Goku, but Goku jumps up and quickly goes back down with the kick and tries to break Bardock's leg. But Bardock catches his little leg and throws him into a nearby boulder. And Goku charges up and Bardock smirks and tells him, don't hold anything back. And Kid Goku laughs maniacally and tells his dad, he's going to die once he's finished with him. And Goku rushes full speed towards Bardock. With the flurry of key blasts, then he charges up a large key ball and launches it towards Bardock. And before Bardock could even catch it, Goku appears behind him and kicks him in his back as hard as he can to the key ball. And then shoots another flurry of key blasts at his back. And then Goku actually laughs crazily and thanks that he won. Raditz watches on in shock of his younger brother's skill and becomes so angry that he's so much better than him. And out of pure jealousy and rage, Raditz charges up and rushes towards Goku to hit him. But Goku dodges out of the way and smiles crazily and tells Raditz to die and tries to slice off his head. But Bardock appears and catches his hand and knocks Goku out and he flies back home. Raditz is left there in a puddle of sweat and pee and Bardock yells at Raditz and tells him to follow along. Raditz says okay and proceeds to follow his father back home. Bardock tells Gine that Goku is growing so strong so quickly and that he often loses himself whenever he fights in a battle and that they need to help him gain and control over that because of what just happened. But I plays the events of today in his head, and he remembers the look on Goku's face throughout the battle he had with him and when he almost killed Raditz. And Brodo groans, but he also feels a sense of pride because of how strong his son is. Goku wakes up the next day and groans and rubs his neck and then screams out, I'm hungry. And Gine tells the boy to be quiet and the dinner is already done. And Goku runs towards the table and the family of Saiyans ravage their food. After they're done, Bardock tells Goku to follow him and tells Raditz to come along. And the father and sons all go outside and meditate. And while meditating, Bardock opens his eye and looks at Goku and raises his eyebrow. Because Goku has his hands out with the key balls rotating around his hands. And also a Oreo around him. Bardock thanks to himself that his son never ceases to impress him. The meditation that Goku does with his father helps him calm his mind and helps him control his key and lower it because of how often he does it. So Goku would be like learning key control way before even going to Earth. Bardock often tells Goku not to show his full power around the prince yet because the king may get jealous and may try to find a way to get him killed. Like when he sent Broly away. Goku also learned of Broly and Paragus' existence because of Bardock. One day, 
when Bardock and Goku was training, Goku asked his father, is there another Saiyan child as strong as him or even stronger? And Bardock told him yes, and he must one day find him because he will be a good sparring partner. And he may even be Goku, but Goku laughs and says, there is no Saiyan in the universe or in the multiverse that can compete with my power. But one day I will find this Broly that you speak of and put his power to the test. And Bardock laughs and then they continue sparring. Goku also often goes on missions. Goku often goes on missions with his brother, Vegeta and Nappa. When Goku is with them, he's often silent and Vegeta recognizes his strength, but always tries to throw it in his face that he's the prince of all saints and his royal bloodline is beyond stronger than Goku. But Goku never pays attention to this and just let him speak and it aggravates Vegeta so much. So Vegeta challenges Goku often to fights and Goku always let the prince win and Raditz always has to rush to his brother to help him get up and get out of there. And Vegeta laughs and tells Goku to get out of my sight, you weakling. One day, Vegeta challenged Goku to another battle and then he beat him once again. And Goku let Raditz come help him up. But Vegeta charged up a key blast and shot it towards Raditz. But Goku intercepted it and hit it away and intensely glared at Vegeta and told him, don't ever try that again. And Vegeta felt a little fear, but because of the power Goku had emanating off of him, but it quickly went away. And Vegeta gained his composure and then grinned and walked away. When Vegeta was walking away, he checked the scouter to see if it was broken because when he deflected his blast, his power shot up to 5,000. I just told Goku he didn't need his help and Goku waved off his hand and headed home. A few nights before Frieza blew up the planet, Barda gave Goku 50% of his power and told Goku he knew the future of the planet and that Frieza would destroy it. And Goku listened to his father and told him he feels a hundred times stronger. And is this what his father powers feels like? Bardock told Goku to hide his power for now on until he goes on his mission the next day with the prince. Bardock told Goku when he's strong enough to go kill Frieza, but make sure he doesn't hold anything back. When that day comes around and make his people proud, Goku nods his head to his father and tells him he'll make him proud and will avenge his people. The next day comes around and Goku hugs his parents and tells them goodbye. Okay, so now let's do a power cap. Before Bardock gave his power to Goku, Goku's max power was 8,500, but now it's 15,000. And the prince's power is at 6,000 right now. And Raditz's power is at 4,000 and Nappa's power at 5,000. Mind you, they're still kids. Like, this is before they even grew up. So they're still like 12, 13 years old. And Raditz like 35, I think. He still got hurt, basically. But now that we got the power cap out of there, let's continue the story. Goku's ship flies to the planet that his brother Vegeta and Nappa are on, and he goes and meets up with him. They all are aware that planet Vegeta has been destroyed, and Goku sheds a tear, and Vegeta calls him weak because of this. And this is when the crew starts to suspect that Freezer was the one that destroyed the planet. But Goku didn't confirm any of this, because he doesn't fully trust the Saiyans yet. But he does trust his brother, but he still hasn't told him the truth yet. It's been a year since the planet has been destroyed, and the boys all train together and spar together. And often Vegeta challenges Goku still because Goku is the strongest, like he's the second strongest and Raditz is after him. But Vegeta will soon realize that Goku's actually the strongest and he's the second. The Saiyans go on a mission to conquer a planet for Frieza and the Saiyans take over the place easily until they come across a powerful Namekian. With Nefa being as cocky as he is, he charges up a blast and shoots it at the Namekian, but it, the blast didn't phase him, and the Namekian roars towards Nappa and gut punched him, and Nappa fell unconscious. Raditz punched the Namekian away while saying, that's enough playing around, until the Namekian swung his arm on Raditz's armor and pulled him closer until Raditz grabbed his arm and slammed him on the ground. And the Namekian got up and multiplied himself into four, and they all fought Raditz at the same time, and they eventually beat Raditz half to death. Goku giggled at this. But because he knew that his brother wasn't dead, but he just wanted him to feel the pain of just getting beat, you know, to help his character development. But soon after, Vegeta rushes in to fight the Namekian, and he blasts every clone away, and then tells the Namekian that he's going to kill him right here and now. After Vegeta beats each clone, he kicks the original down to the ground, and he plummets to the planet. He shoots key blasts at him while he's falling. Until he couldn't see anymore. Then Vegeta turns around thinking he's one. And the Namekian appears and shoots eye beams in Vegeta's armor. And he pierces his stomach. 
and the making appears again and kicks Vegeta out of the sky onto the ground. After Vegeta is on the ground, the Namekian destroys each of the scatters and Goku smirks because he knows now that he can go all out without Frieza getting in the business. Once Vegeta gets on the ground, he screams in Goku and tells him, Help me fight or else we're all gonna die, Kakarot! Goku smiles and says, Finally, a real challenge. Vegeta quietly questions this and Goku begins laughing crazily and starts to charge up his full power until it reaches the power level of 25,000. Vegeta becomes really shocked because he's never seen Kakarot show this much power. Goku quickly rushes towards the Namekian at full speed and the Namekian begins to get on guard until he feels a sharp pain in his arm and his hand magically falls off. In an instant, Goku appears right in his face and tries to strike him with the right hook, but the Namekian dodges it and he tries to swing back at Goku, but Goku makes a key blade around his hand and slices off the Namekian right arm. Before the Namekian had time to regrow his arm, Goku rushes at him and grabs his face and flies to the ground at full speed and slams his face into the planet. Goku slams his head into the ground repeatedly and crazily laughs and tells him, get up green man, fight back. You're supposed to be a real challenge for me and not a weakling. What a disappointment. Then the Namekian tries to wrap his arms around Goku and his legs, but then Goku starts to scream and key blast begins to shoot around all around his body. And the Namekian starts screaming in pain and then lets go of Goku and tries to run away. But then Goku appears right in front of him and pierces his hand right through the Namekian's chest and then blasts his whole entire body until it's nothing but dust. Goku then powers down and wipes the purple blood off of himself and looks at Vegeta and smiles. Goku rushes towards Vegeta and charges up a key ball in Vegeta's face and tells him, did you enjoy the show? And Vegeta steps back in fear and Goku shoots the blast and blows up an entire mountain right behind Vegeta, and Vegeta is left in shock. After this, Goku picks up Raditz and Nappa and puts them into their space pod and set the coordinates to a random freezer planet where they can go and heal it. And after he does that, he gets in his and do the exact same. Vegeta follows ahead shortly. After each sand is healed, they all get a Zenkai boost. Raditz's power is now at 15,000, and Vegeta's at, uh, 18,000 and Nappa is at a 10,000. When they all healed up, Goku approaches Raditz and tells him that they need to train. And Raditz follows Goku into a training facility. Vegeta watches on from afar and Goku notices this, but he ignores the prince. Goku tells Raditz that he needs to be stronger than what he is now. Because at this rate, on the next mission, he's going to die because he's so weak and he will let him die because he refuses to have a weakling call himself his brother. Raditz grits his teeth and stays quiet because he knows that Goku is telling the truth. Raditz begins to power up and Goku tells him to go all out and fight like he's trying to kill him or else he will get beat to death in his training session. During this training session, Goku made Raditz fight him till he could land one hit on him. Raditz impressed Goku because during this battle, Goku could see that Raditz has a lot of room to grow. But Goku grew tired of this, of just dodging, weaving, and blocking Raditz's attacks. He kicks Raditz in the jaw, and Raditz flies towards the wall and holds his chin as he gets back up. Goku flew towards him, ready to punch him and end the whole issue until Raditz moves out the way before Goku could land the punch. And he gets some more distance between him and Goku. It's a double Sunday at Goku, and Goku forms after images, and Raditz shoots at each one until he stops and closes his eyes and just tries to feel Goku's key. But once he finally gets the real Goku, it's too late. Goku grabs a hold of his long hair and swings him onto the ground and then shoots a key blast at him. Raditz is left there in pain and Vegeta grits his teeth in, out of anger for Goku because he's hidden his power from him for many years now. During the years to come, Goku and Raditz's brotherly relationship has gotten even better because of the training they have done so much. And Vegeta's hatred for Goku also grows. Vegeta has even gotten stronger at this point because of how hard he pushed himself out of fear of being left behind by Goku even more. The Saiyans are all adults at this point, and this time, Freezer sees how much their power has grown, and he feels that they are becoming such a nuisance and a headache sooner or later. So he finds the Saiyans a suicide mission to at least kill one or just the whole group. When Freezer tells them the mission, Goku sees the smiles on Zarba and the Dory's faces. 
And then as he walks away, he hears Frieza's chuckle. He takes note of this and just feels that something isn't right. And before they could leave to go off to the planet, Goku pulls aside Raditz and tells him something isn't right. And he should stay on his guard as soon as they arrive to the planet. Vegeta overhears Goku tell Raditz this and he becomes on guard because of Goku's suspicion. Once the Saiyans arrive to the planet and exit their space pods, Nappa realizes that this planet has no moon. This confirms Goku's suspicions that something isn't most definitely isn't right. He thinks that Frieza is trying to get them killed. And once he sees space pods in the air and a flying ship, he realizes that this is true. He tells the rest of the Saiyans about the truth, finally, that Frieza was the one who blew up planet Vegeta and his father Brodok is the one that told him this before he even died. All the Saiyans are left in shock and Vegeta just thinks to himself he knew it. And they all destroy the scouters. Once they do this, Zarbon and Dodori appear in an army of Frieza soldiers. Zarbon screams at the soldiers and tells them, Kill the monkeys! Vegeta rushes towards Zarbon and tells the other Saiyans to fight the rest of the army. Nappa and Raditz follows his command and they fight and destroy most of the army, but Goku doesn't help. He stands back and just watches the Saiyans fight the rest of the army. The army is soon destroyed as Raditz finishes off the last soldier. Dodoria goes in for a sneak attack and screams out, Die, you monkey! But Goku appears in front of him and grabs his hand and throws him away. Then tells his brother to pay attention to his surroundings even more. And that this should never ever happen again. Raditz smirks at this and tells Goku, I already knew that you would come over here, brother. That's why I didn't react. It's about time that you do something. After this, Nappa goes to help the prince in his battle because he sees that he's getting overpowered. And Goku tells Raditz to go fall along with Nappa to help Vegeta fight and he'll take care of Pinky here. And Raditz tells his brother, don't destroy the planet with all your crazy power, you monster. And Goku laughs and smiles and says, no promises. Dora then gets up and says, filthy peasant, you'll die for that. Goku starts to charge up all his key and screams out and laughing, saying, finally! I can let loose! As he charges up, the Doria Scouter goes from 20k to 40k to 60k to 80k, then he explodes. Goku begins to grow in size and his pupil starts to disappear. The fighting with Zarbon and the other Saiyans pauses because they sense the power coming from the Goku's direction, and Vegeta just becomes in shock even more once he sees the power that Goku has. Vegeta clenches his fist and says he's done it once again. He passed me when I thought I finally caught up to him. Nappa and Raditz smiles at the show of Goku's power and they all resume fighting again. And Vegeta fights to his heart content to show that he's no weaker than Goku. On the opposite side of the battlefield, Goku has entered his Akari state. His power is at 450,000 and it's still rising. Dodori is scared for his life but gains his composure back when Zorban screams out loud that don't let these apes scare you. They're nowhere near Lord Frieza's power. And Dodoria screams out and says, yeah, you're right. And he starts to shoot a barrage of ki blasts at Goku, but Goku just stands there unfazed, smiling like a madman. And Dodoria grits his teeth and charges up a bigger attack to Goku blears towards him with a thunderous kick towards his torso. As he's flying away, Goku catches his foot and slams him on the ground. As Dodoria's body plops back up, Goku pounds him back onto the ground and punches him deep into the core, creating a crater. As Goku is punching him, Dodoria screams out for help, but Goku says, Nobody is going to save you, Pinky. Then he stumps on his body till he starts to create an even larger crater. Then Goku laughs even more and tells him, Didn't you say you was going to kill me? Didn't you say that I was going to die? Weren't you going to murder me? Didn't you say I was going to regret ever attacking you? Dora starts to plead with Goku and tell him, Hey, I'll serve you. I'll serve you and do whatever you say. I'll listen to your every command. And Goku says, oh, is that right? And then he stops stopping in Dodoria and flies up into the air and shoots a massive blast out of his mouth where Dodoria was killing him instantly. The blast is so strong, it's parts of the planet core and the planet erupts in fire and volcanoes. Zarbon is left speechless in this chaos. He starts to transform into his ugly form. With this, his power is rising. He takes out Nappa, and now it's just Vegeta and Raditz fighting him. Till Goku appears, punches Zarbon with so much force, it blows the other Saiyans away. Vegeta catches himself and rushes towards Goku to help him. But when he arrives next to Goku, Zarbon is already dead, and his head is way off of his body. Goku begins to laugh at the chaos he just created, and he charges up his key even more and sort of loses himself. Till Raditz screams out to his brother, Brother, control yourself! 
We have to go. This planet isn't safe anymore. Goku hears the voice of his brother, and he starts to gain more conscience of himself, gains his composure, then he powers down, scratches his head, and says, eh, my bad. I didn't mean to go all crazy. It's just, ah, I haven't had a good fight like that in a while. And Raditz screams out, you mean a massacre? Saiyan talks amongst each other, and they discuss what are their next moves going to be, since they have killed both Zarbon and Dodori, at Frieza's closest henchmen, and they come to a conclusion that they should all separate. But they shouldn't be near each other. They should go far apart from each other. And it should all get stronger to where and they face Frieza. They can have the power to kill him. And Goku agrees with this. But Goku says that he wants to go off alone. And that they should go in groups of maybe two. No, not two. He thinks that Vegeta and Raditz should go somewhere together. And Nappa should go on his own. Because his power shouldn't be sensed. And he should be okay by himself. But... Vegeta doesn't follow Goku's plan, and he sets off by himself, and he leaves the planet. Raditz and Goku are left in shock because the prince never listens. He always does what he wants to do, but they are okay with this, and they hope that he will become stronger whenever they meet again. And Nappa he agrees with this, and he sets off to his wherever he wants to go to. Raditz soon leaves, and he sets off to Planet Yardra, and Goku goes to Earth. Goku arrives to Earth. His ship lands at Mount Pazu. But Grandpa Gohan, Goku's ship crashes on the ground. Grandpa Gohan runs out to see whatever that loud noise was. And when he sees a man comes out of space pod, he gets really confused and really scared and he gets on guard. And Goku laughs and says, hey, old man, I'm not going to do anything to you. You don't have to defend yourself against me. Grandpa Gohan scratches his head and says, eh, thank God, because this guy seems so strong. Okay, so with Goku not landing on Earth at birth, the Earth severely changes, and the Red Rabbit Army has taken over the world. King Piccolo is also free on the other side of the world, and him and the Red Ribbon are, like, they came to an agreement, and one of them controls one side of the Earth, and King Piccolo controls another side of the Earth. Grandpa Gohan begins to think to himself that maybe this guy can help out the planet, and Goku asks him, what are you thinking about, old man? Why are you just sitting there looking at me? Grandpa Gohan proceeds to tell Goku about the situation of this planet, and Goku tells him, Lead me to the Red Ribbon Army or whatever their name is. And I'll destroy every last one of them. Grandpa Gohan proceeds to take Goku to one of the bases, and as soon as they arrive, they see that this one person is lurking around the area. And Goku goes behind the person and taps her on the shoulder and asks her, What are you doing? And the lady screams out in shock and says, Ah! Who moved, pervert? Who just stares at her until she stops screaming. And she says, Cover your mouth. Why are you so loud? I'm right in front of you. And she says, Ah, oh, you jerk. Maybe next time don't come up behind people and scare them. Goku then asks Bowman, Does she work for the Red Ribbon? Because if she do, she has to die. Then Bowman says, No, 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 no. I'm nowhere near with them guys. I'm, I'm against them, actually. I'm here to just see... What can I improve on with my machines to fight against them? Goku tells her, there's no need for that. I'm finna kill them all right now. Goku says, how would you even do that? You don't have no type of weapon with you. Goku says, I am a weapon. As he starts to charge up a key ball in his hand and blasts it at one of the towers. And it blows up off impact. Bulma looks on in shock at what Goku just did. Goku tells her, enjoy the fireworks. And then he flies up and goes in front of the base and charges up another blast and blows up the entire area, leaving a crater in his wake. And he flies back to Boma and Boma just says, what are you? Goku laughs and tells her, your savior. Boma begins to blush and tells him, stop it, you weirdo. And then she sees his tail and asks him, hey, what's up with that? Why do you have a tail? And Goku tells her, this is a part of me. As he moves it in front of him and she goes to pull it and he says, ow, it hurts. And then she says, oh, so you were telling the truth. Grandpa Gohan is also in shock at what Goku just did. And Goku asks him, hey, where is King Piccolo at now? He's next. Grandpa Gohan begins to show Goku directions and they begin to leave until Bama screams out, hey, wait, can I come with you? And Goku says, yeah, why not? And he picks her up and then also picks up Grandpa Gohan and they fly towards where King Piccolo Castle is. Once they get there, Goku beats up and destroys the tambourine and all of the other demons that Piccolo had. And then once he meets Piccolo, he sees that he's in Namekian. He thinks to himself, this planet has Namekians? I thought only Namek had those. But then he remembers that that other planet from back when he was a child had a Namekian on it also. So he thinks to himself that maybe this is the same situation as that one. 
Goku goes and kills King Piccolo by putting his hand through his chest, and King Piccolo spits out an egg, and the Piccolo that we all know and love is born. Goku looks on at this and just ignores it because at this point, what can he even do to the egg? He really don't care about it. Goku tells Grandpa Gohan that, eh, the job's done. Now I have to train. As Goku starts to leave the castle, Kami appears in front of him and tells him thank you for all the work that he's done for saving this planet. And he tells him he can also help him train. Goku questions this and Grandpa Gohan tells him he can teach him a few techniques and also show him who his master is. Goku agrees to this and they go to meet Master Roshi. Master Roshi feels the power coming off of Goku and Goku greets him and tells him, Hey, old man, I want you to teach me some of your moves. I heard they're pretty powerful. And Master Roshi laughs and Krillin tells Goku, Hey, don't you dare talk to the master like that. Goku tells Krillin, Are you going to make me not talk to him that way? And Krillin says, Yes, I will. And Goku says, Well, do it. As Krillin starts to charge up his key and gets in his battle pose, Goku laughs and tells him, bring it on, baldy. Krillin goes in for a punch. He sees that he couldn't even touch Goku. Goku dodges every punch and kick that Krillin throws. Once Krillin decides to throw a destructor disc, Goku puts key into his hand and charges up his fist and punches the air. And the air strike knocks the destructor disc out of Krillin's hand and Krillin falls unconscious. Goku didn't hit him that hard because he knew if he did with his full power, then Krilla would die. Okay, so with Vegeta, as he flies throughout space, he meets another guy that looks sort of like Goku. The guy intercepts Vegeta's ship and lets him on. And Vegeta tells him about everything that happened and Turtles tells him about everything he has going on. They both agree to work with each other and they shake hands and now they become partners. And Vegeta soon eats one of the fruits of might that Turtles always has. And he eats that and he gets the power and he feels that maybe this will be the step to beating Kakarot and Frieza. And with the Raditz, he's on Yajrat learning all sorts of techniques. The people didn't immediately trust Raditz, but since Raditz isn't how he was in the original because he had his brother Goku around to humble him a lot, he was more trusting, and the Yardradians began to trust him some more. They happily taught Raditz more of their skills and techniques. Goku trains with Master Roshi, Krillin, and Gohan for a few weeks, and he picks up moves like the Kamehameha, the Destructor Disc from Krillin, and the Solar Flare. The training Goku did with him also made them stronger. Krillin is now at a power level of 2,000, Roshi is at 1,700, and Gohan's at 1,100. The relationship with the humans have also grown and his relationship with Boma is also blooming during the time he spends training with Roshi and the humans. Boma offers Goku to stay at the capsule court with her and Goku agrees. She has shown all the things that she created to fight against King Piccolo and the Red Rim Army. Goku offers her his ship so she can expand her knowledge of alien technology and hopefully build him a better one. Goku tells everybody about his past and the Saiyans and Frieza and his people that he had to work with, like Vegeta, Raditz, and Nappa. Humans start to sweat once they hear about Goku's past, and Krillin asks, Hey, if that Vegeta guy went rogue, wouldn't he come back to try to fight you sooner or later? Goku smirks. It doesn't matter if he does or not. He'll never beat me. I'm the strongest Saiyan alive right now. Once he's done trying to go with Roshi, he goes with Kami to the lookout. Bye, Bama. I'll be back before you know it. Don't get yourself in any danger. I don't want to have to pause my training to come save you. Bama blushes and waves Goku off. Before Goku could actually leave, Krillin runs up towards him. Kakarot, can I come with you to train? I have to become stronger so that I can also protect my planet. Goku agrees with this and Kami leaves with them. Once they get to the lookout, Kami tells Goku, there's this room that you can train in for a year, but on the outside world, only a day would have passed by. Goku ponders whether he wants to go inside that place or not. He knows that a year worth of training would be a great amount of time to grow. Well, I need a year's supply of food. Yes, everything you need will be provided with you once you get ready to go in there. All right, then I'll go. Kami gives Goku four sensu beans and his food. What are these? Eat them once you feel like you're hurt or really exhausted. They'll heal you right up. Goku and Krillin goes into the chamber and they both look at each other. And Goku tells him, this room is amazing. Right now, you're too weak, Krillin. And if I went all out in training with you, you would die. So I'll train with you for about three months, and then you'll have to leave and go train with Kami. Three months has passed by in there, and Krillin has grown a considerable amount. He's at a power level of about 9,000 right now, after the training he did with Goku. As of right now, Goku's base power level is at about 83,000. But when he goes and transforms into his Akari form, his power level goes all the way up to 830,000. 
Goku decides to train in the Akari state without detransforming for the entire nine months that he has left. Goku creates clones of himself like he's seen the Namekian do when he was younger, and he fights them. During his training with one of them, he witnessed one of his sparks on his hand turns into the golden key. What was that? It felt incredible. After Goku destroys each of the clones, he does image training and fights against Frieza in his head. Once Goku feels like he's completely worn out, he goes to take a sensu beam, and he feels so much more powerful. His power has gone up from 830,000 in Zakari form to 1 million. This is amazing. I feel brand new and way stronger. Goku charges his power up to the max, and he goes back to train. Once Goku steps out of the room, he looks completely different. They have never seen him in this form. Goku comes out and meditates with Kami and Krillin. Goku goes back to Capsule Corp after this, and he tells Bulma to build him a gravity chamber. Once she does, Goku trains in this every day, becoming stronger and stronger. After some months of training and staying with the Earthlings, Raditz appears in the gravity chamber where Goku was. Raditz, is that you? Goku goes and turns down the gravity back to normal, and Raditz gets up and tells his brother, Well, you've grown a lot stronger. Look at you. Goku stares back at Raditz in confusion. How did you even get here? Did you teleport or something? Raditz smirks, then nods his head yes. The two begin to catch up, and Raditz tells Goku all about the techniques that he's learned and the planet that he was on, and Goku shows Raditz some of his power. Well, Raditz, you've grown a lot, and you've gotten a lot stronger. I'm impressed. Let's train and put this new power of yours to the test. The brothers flies off to a wasteland. You better go all out, Raditz, or else I'm not going to hold back. Goku uses about 50% of his base power level, and Raditz goes and charges it up to his full power. Goku dashes towards Raditz, ready to punch him, but Raditz grabs his arm and throws him. He teleports towards Goku and lands a kick on him, sending him into the ground. Goku forms two destructo discs in his hand, and he launches them towards Raditz. Raditz flies away from this, and Goku forms two more destructo discs and throws them at Raditz. Raditz notices this and then teleports behind Goku and tries to kick him once again. Goku grabs Raditz to it and throws him into the the air. Before Raditz can catch himself, Goku blears in front of him and lands a hard punch in his gut. Goku starts to throw a barrage of attacks at Raditz and Raditz gets hit by every one of them. Before Goku could land another attack, Raditz blocks this and teleports away a good distance away from Goku actually. Raditz starts to charge up a double Sunday. Enough playing brother, I'm ending this now. Goku laughs and charges up to 100% of his base power. End it then brother. Raditz shoots the large double Sundays at Goku. Goku rockets towards Raditz and completely passes his attack and forms a blue aura around his hand to make his finishing blow against Raditz so he could actually knock him out. As he approaches Raditz with this attack, he calmly tells him, it's over. Goku slams his fist into Raditz's face, stopping his attack and launching his body miles away from where they were. Goku goes to retrieve Raditz's body and bring him back to Capsule Court where he feeds Raditz a sensu bean and Raditz wakes up and feels a massive Zenkai boost that he just got. Well, Raditz, you have grown a lot stronger and your techniques really shines the light on that. You have to teach me the teleporting thing one day. After this fight, Raditz's power level goes from 90k away to 250k. You guys have to remember, if Goku's elite's hand, then Raditz has to be one too. So that's why his power level goes way up like that. With Raditz being on Earth, him and Goku trains together, giving them both higher power levels. Goku teaches Raditz how to transform into the Akari form during this time, and Raditz quickly adapts to it. Goku also takes Raditz to Kami's lookout and tells Raditz about the hyperbolic time chamber. And Raditz enters it, and after training for an entire year, his base power level is now at 1 million. Deep in space, Vegeta and Turles are also growing really stronger because of the fruit of might. Vegeta has grown beyond what he could imagine, and he feels that he has the power to kill Goku, but also Frieza. Turles isn't seeing as much growth as Vegeta is because he's still like a, he still is a low-class Saiyan. The two train quite often, and this leaves Vegeta at a power level of 1.3 million and Turles at 800,000. Because of Vegeta's thirst for power, he has destroyed so many planets to just get the fruit of might. Vegeta goes to some of Frieza's planets and destroys them, and he asks as many soldiers as he can, where is Frieza? But none of them answers him, so he just kills them all. Frieza actually catches wind of the destruction that Vegeta is causing, and he plans to take care of him sooner or later. When Frieza goes to Planet Namek, Vegeta finds out what he's going there to do, and he rushes there with Turtles. Back on Earth, Goku and Raditz have seemingly made this place their home, and Goku's relationship with Boma has also became, like, official. Raditz, one day, you have to find your lady of your own. It feels good to have somebody like this. Raditz thinks about this, and he knows that Goku was right. He see how happy his brother is. When Frieza's dead, that's when I'll finally start to get things like that. 
Bowman has also taken the time out to create another scatter out of the remnants of Goku's old one. We hear some of Frieza's soldiers talking about going to Namek and using the wishing orbs. Kakarot, Frieza is going to play Namek to use the Dragon Balls. Goku and Raditz both start to feel a feeling of dread just imagining what Frieza would risk for. You have to go there now, Kakarot, holding to my shoulder. Goku runs to grab some sensu beans and Boma gives him a dragon radar. You better destroy him. Goku smiles at Boma. I'll bring you back his head. Then he goes to grab Raditz's shoulder. The brothers soon arrive to Namek. We have to find the Dragon Balls before they do. After using the Dragon Radar, they found two Dragon Balls. And they soon meet up with the Ginyu Force once they go out to find another one. Well, if it isn't the Weirdo Force, this angers the Ginyu Force and they all charge at the Sands. I got this, brother. They're all weak. Raditz dashes towards Raccoon and punches a hole in his chest. No way he could do that to him. He's a weakling. Raditz charges up his power enough to blow up their scatters, and they all start to feel fear. Raditz teleports towards Butter and slices off his head. He also looks at Guldo, then teleports towards him and puts his hand in front of Guldo's face, and he charges up a key attack, and he blasts him away. Raditz then teleports towards Jace. Captain! And he puts his hand through his chest and rips out his heart. As this goes on, Captain Ginyu screams, Change now! But before the attack could hit, Goku throws a turtle in the way of the beam, and he changes with the frog. After seeing this, Raditz blasts away Captain Ginyu's body. Well, that takes care of that. A huge power level enters the atmosphere, and both Goku and Raditz recognize one of the signatures, but not the other one. Vegeta flies out of the ship, and he shoots a blast at Freezer's ship, blowing it up. Frieza comes out of his ship in his chair. Oh, Vegeta, you're finally out of hiding. Where are the rest of the apes? The Crusher Corps comes off the ship to search for a spot where they can plant the fruit of might. Doing this, they run into Goku and Raditz. Hey, Captain, why are you in different clothes? Did you change that fast? Turtle comes up behind them and says, what are you talking about? I'm right here. Raditz starts to laugh. Brother, why does he look like you? He looks like our dad as well. Could this be our other brother? Turtles and Kakarot lock eyes and they both thinking the same thing. Who are you? Turtles then starts to speak. Vegeta told me of you two, but he never said that one of you would look like me. Before Turtles could say anything else, who appears right in front of him and he starts to walk around Turtles. Hmm. Where did you and Vegeta even meet? How did you even survive the destruction of planet Vegeta? What type of training did you do? You seem really strong, but your energy feels odd. It feels dark. Turtles starts to laugh. Well, isn't this something? This understanding what Goku was doing, the Crusher Corps goes to charge at him to attack him. But soon as they do, Goku rushes in and kills each one of them in the blink of an eye. Turtles starts to think, how did he even do that? I didn't even see him move. This is what Vegeta must have been talking about. This guy is strong. Goku picks up the seed from the Tree of Might and he looks at it. What is this? What are we planning to do with this? Turtles tells Goku all about how he plants trees to take power from the planet. Mm. I don't think you should keep doing this. I don't think that I'm going to allow you to even do this. You should stop while you can before you have to die here. And I don't want to get my hands dirty with sand blood. You should just join me. You can live in peace at this planet that I stay on. You don't have to go and pillage planets like the old saying used to do in the old days. This is a new time, Turtles. Turtles starts to laugh. Ah, you fool. I'm not going to join you. You're going to die here if you don't give me back my seed. Goku throws the seed back at Turtles. I'm going to give you a choice. If you plant this and this tree grows... I'm going to kill you. But if you don't, you can survive and you can live whatever way you want to. Just without doing this. Goku then flies off to where Vegeta and Frieza are. And he sees the battle that they are having. Vegeta starts to get overpowered. And Frieza starts to just beat on him. Raditz runs in and kicks Frieza away from Vegeta. I didn't need your help, peasant. Don't help me at all. Vegeta gets back up and he flies towards Frieza to fight him once again. And their battle isn't very one-sided as you may think. Because in this one, Vegeta is stronger than what he was in the Namek Saga. So he puts up a battle. He puts up a fight in Frieza's third form. But when Frieza transforms to his final form, 
This is when Vegeta starts and has a hard time. Frieza slaps Vegeta away and ends him out of the fight. Vegeta is knocked out, but he soon gets up when Goku feeds him a sensu bean. Take this. This will make you stronger, Vegeta. Vegeta gets up and he feels the Zenkai boost that he just got. And he goes off to find Turtleus. He steps in to fight Frieza. And he transforms into his Akari form off the rip. Like he just goes straight into it. And him and Frieza clashes. And as the fight grows on, Raditz starts to get overpowered. And he siphons off some of Frieza's power with the move that he learned from Yardra. I really don't know the name of it, so it's just going say that so yeah he he does this and he gets some of Frieza's power and Frieza noticed this and he slaps Raditz away with his tail before Raditz could hit the ground Goku catches him and he tells him brother just rest I'll take it from here Goku looks up at Frieza and he starts to laugh it's been a long time coming Frieza it rain ends here you tyrant Frieza says ah you monkey what gives you so much pride that you think you can end me? Goku starts to laugh even harder as he flies into the air and starts to charge up his power. The worst thing you could have done in your whole entire life was left me alive. Goku charges up his power and an orange glow surrounds his body. Goku hair starts to rise up and his pupils start to disappear. Goku hair turns brown and this state he's in now is the Akari form mixed with false super saiyan i know this form doesn't exist but this is a what if and we gotta make it a little different like we gotta do a little something with this once frieza sees the transformation that goku has gained he is terrified is this the super saiyan frieza starts to shoot as many death beams as he could at goku die you insolent creature goku swats away every attack that frieza shoots and he dashes towards him readying a punch for him Frieza goes flying once Goku lands this, but before he could smash into anything, Goku catches his tail and knees him in the stomach. Then he puts both of his hands together and then he smashes them into Frieza's back. During this whole encounter, Turtle is planted the Tree of Might on the other side of the planet. Both him and Vegeta has eaten a fruit and they both gained immense power and Vegeta has also gained a new form. Goku and Raditz sees the tree in the distance and Goku just thinks to himself, I hope they're on our side. They both feel a surge of power coming from Vegeta, and Raditz goes to check it out. Wow, Vegeta, this power is incredible, but it's wrong. I don't think you should have gained it this way. Vegeta looks at Raditz in anger and disgust, and Tartarus shoots a huge key attack at him. Raditz barely gets out the way of this, and Tartarus appears in front of him and stabs him with the keyblade in his stomach. Raditz tries to reach for a sensu bean, but he realizes that he doesn't have any on him, and he probably dropped him once he was fighting the Ginyu Force. As he fights Turtles, he isn't at tip-top shape because of the wound in his stomach, and Turtles soon overpowers him, but Raditz transforms into his Akari form, and the fight truly begins. As the fight go on, Raditz tries to talk to Turtles and tells him, you could have been one of us. You could have trained on our planet and became even stronger with me and my brother in the right way. And then you look so much like him to the point where I would have accepted you as one of my brothers. But Turtles isn't trying to hear any of this. Turtles charges up his power even more and he rushes towards Raditz to end the fight. But as he goes in for a killing blow, Raditz dodges this and he slaps Turtles to the ground. Vegeta then jumps into the fight, and him and Turtles rush towards Raditz. As Vegeta fights Raditz, Raditz begins to get overpowered even more, and Turtles lands a finishing blow on Raditz that kills him. Take his head. I'm going to show Kakarot what's going to happen to him next. The fight between Goku and Frieza has been going on furiously, and Goku is winning easily until Frieza transforms into his full-powered state. Vegeta and Turtles rushes towards the two. Goku strikes Frieza in his stomach and he charges up a full power Kamehameha and he blasts at Frieza and Frieza is seemingly killed by this. Vegeta and Turtles then arrives. So you chose to plant the tree, Turtles. What a shame. Vegeta starts to laugh at this. Kakarot, you're not leaving this planet alive. And oh, here's a present for you. Turtles holds up Raditz's head and Goku screams out, What have y'all done? 
Turles throws the head in the air, and Vegeta shoots a blast at it, disintegrating it instantly. Goku starts to scream at it in a rage, and he transforms into a Super Saiyan. On the other side of the battlefield, Frieza stares at Goku in horror. The monkey's done it. He's done it. He's transformed into the legendary Super Saiyan. Vegeta and Turtles are both shocked at this. Vegeta charges up his key and gains his composure and rushes into battle with Goku. As the fight goes on, Vegeta is holding his own against Goku. And he kicks Goku into the core of the planet. And he shoots a full power Gallic gun at him. And this hits the core of the planet, causing volcanoes to appear. Goku rushes out of the crater that he just created with his body. And he goes in to strike Vegeta. But Vegeta dodges this and kicks Goku in the head and smashes his fist into Goku's face. Goku is in a berserk state, so he can't really control himself right now. So he can't throw accurate punches at Vegeta. So Vegeta just pumples him. After being hit so many times, Goku screams out again and he charges up, causing much more power to come out of him. Turtles looks on at this. This guy is a real monster. Goku rushes towards Turtles and he throws a flurry of devastating attacks at him. Turtles can't hold his own against Goku because he's much more powerful than him. While Turtles is fighting Goku, his tail unravels around his armor and the berserk Goku notices this. Then he goes to rip it off. And when Turtles tries to block an incoming attack from Goku, Goku grabs both of his arms and rips them off. Turtles screams in horror. Vegeta, help me please! As Turtles continue to beg for Vegeta's help, Goku slices off his head and he steps on it. Vegeta, you're next! Goku dashes towards Vegeta and Vegeta shoots a barrage of key attacks at Goku to slow him down. Goku blocks these, but then Vegeta charges up another one and this one is much larger than the last one. And he throws it towards Goku. Once it explodes, Vegeta flies down to finish Goku, but Goku grabs his face and he smashes it into the ground. Then he proceeds to beat Vegeta nearly to death. Vegeta then realizes that he can't defeat Goku, so he flies off to try to get away. As he does this, he sees Frieza, and Goku also sees him. Goku then directs his attention to Frieza, and he goes in to fight him. As the fight go on, he brutally beats Frieza, and then he charges up a key attack that comes out his mouth, and he shoots it at Frieza, killing him instantly. Once Goku kills Frieza, he starts to nearly destroy the planet. But he hears Raditz talking his head. Brother, calm down. Goku pupils start to form in his eyes. Raditz, is that you? Yes, brother. I'm in another world right now with this guy named King Kai. Goku feels relieved after hearing where his brother is. He sees a ship fly off in the distance and he flies towards it at full speed. Once he reaches the ship, he stops it and he sees Vegeta. You should be dead right now. I could have killed you during this fight. But I'm going to let you live. Vegeta stumbles back. But then Goku realizes that the planet is nearly finna explode. So he goes to find some of the mechanisms so that they can reverse the damage of the planet with the Dragon Balls. Once Puranga is summoned, the Namekians ask him for their wish. And they thank Goku for everything that he's done. The Namekians take Goku to meet Grand Earther Guru. And Guru unlocks his potential as a thanks for saving his planet. Because of this... Goku is much more stronger, and his potential and his fighting capacity begins to grow because of a potential that's been unlocked in him. The Namekians also allow Goku to take Dende to his planet to replace Kami because of Kami's old age. As Goku set the coordinates to planet Earth, he remembered the planet that Raditz learned the teleport technique at, and he thinks, maybe I should go there. Goku then sets the coordinates to planet Yardrat, and he goes there, and he meets the Yardratians, and this time, him and Dende learns the teleporting technique and every technique that they've taught Goku in the original. Once their training is done, they both teleport to planet Earth, but before they get there, King Cold has also entered the planet's atmosphere, and instead of Trunks coming into the future to stop him, it's Gohan. He quickly destroys King Cold. And Goku arrives to see the aftermath. Who are you? Are you a Saiyan? Why is your hair purple? Gohan introduces himself to Goku, but he doesn't tell him that he's his son. They have a battle, but Goku beats him. Gohan tells Goku to destroy the androids that will come in three years and how he needs to train to if he wants to survive. Goku in his head thinks, could this be my kid? Because he feels sort of his power inside of him. Like he feels the remnants of himself inside of him. 
and he also kind of looks like him. But Goku doesn't say anything about this. After Gohan leaves, go back to the future. Go thinks. Didn't I destroy the Red Ribbon when I came here? How did one of them manage to survive? After a year of training with Piccolo, Piccolo has gained so much more power. And I would say that he's probably at a power level of Super Saiyan Goku and the original on Namek. During this time, Goku has also gained grade 2 of Super Saiyan. And he feels that he needs to wish Raditz back to life so that he can teach him how to transform and he'll be helped killing the androids. Once Goku wishes for this, Raditz is brought back and he informs his brother on what will come in the future. Raditz soon learns Super Saiyan and he gains pretty good control over it and he reaches grade 2 by the time the androids arrive. Gohan is also born in this because Goku and Boma, you know, we're not going to get into all that. <laughs> Once Dr. Jiro and Android 19 arrive to that one city, the Z fighters are already and they're much stronger in this. Heart virus also doesn't infect Goku, so we really don't gotta, you know, worry about that. Raditz transforms into Super Saiyan Grade 2, and he rushes in to fight Android 19. And before he could kill him, a ship arrives, and it's Vegeta. Vegeta transforms into his Super Saiyan, and he rushes down to steal Raditz's kill. Raditz looks at Vegeta in anger. Vegeta, what are you doing here? During the time Vegeta was away, he realized that Goku was much stronger than him. And he realized the wrongs that he was doing by destroying all them planets with Turtles. Once he comes to terms with all the wrong he's done and how Goku kept beating him, this triggers an anger inside him that makes him transform into a Super Saiyan. With the power he just equipped, he thinks that maybe this is what will finally beat Kakarot. Vegeta directs his gaze towards Goku. Kakarot, fight me now! Gohan comes back to the present during this time. And Android 20 takes advantage of this and he rushes away to activate the other androids. And Goku follows behind him. Kakarai, do not ignore me. The Z fighters all go to follow Goku. But once they get there, they see a huge green monster that sucks up both of the androids and the thing that they was in in the original. And he's going to transform. Dr. Jiro screams out to Cell to obey him. But Cell extends his tail towards him and sucks all his power then kills Dr. Jiro. Don't ever give me orders. Cell looks at the Z Fighters and he charges up his power, blowing them away. I'll kill this insect with ease. Vegeta rushes in to punch Cell and he flies into the mountain once Vegeta connects his punch. Vegeta flies towards him again and he envelops his hand with his Super Saiyan aura to smash into Cell's head. But once he does, he kills Cell. Pathetic. As Vegeta tries to fly away, Cell head reforms and he stabs Vegeta with his tail, taking away some of his power. Cell then punches a hole in Vegeta's chest and Vegeta falls out of the sky. Raditz goes in to attack Cell, but Cell dodges everything that he throws. Raditz then bags back and he screams out, Kaioken times 10! And he rushes towards Cell with great speed, proceeding to throw a flurry of attacks at him. What is this going on right now? This android isn't even from my timeline. How could he just destroy the other one so quickly? With the Kaioken stacked on top of Super Saiyan, Raditz is the strongest Saiyan as of now. And he barely gives Cell a challenge. Goku rushes in to help Raditz, but Cell starts to power up even more and he quickly beats Goku and Raditz. After this, Cell tells them about the Cell games and he allows them to train like he did in the original. Raditz goes to pick up Vegeta and he feeds him a sensu bean. And Vegeta gets a Zenkai boost from this. They all go to Kami's lookout and they train in the gravity chamber. Goku decides to go in with Vegeta because it wouldn't be fair for him to go in with Raditz because Raditz could teach Gohan some great techniques. When Vegeta and Goku go in to train, Goku makes it very clear at the start that Vegeta is nowhere near his level. But Goku also offers Vegeta to stay on the planet because here he can grow stronger with him and his brother's help. Goku shows off the grade 2 to Vegeta and Vegeta says, I knew there was a form higher than Super Saiyan. I just never thought I'd have to ever reach it this soon. Goku makes Vegeta stay in his Super Saiyan form to gain more mastery of it. While they were training, Goku mastered Super Saiyan and he took it a step further. And he screamed out until lightning sparked around his body and his hair started to spike up. Kakarot, you've done it! Goku smiles at Vegeta and they continue to train. Vegeta also tries to tap into the power he used on Namek because of the... 
fruit of might he had. Vegeta combines this power in grade 4 Super Saiyan, giving him immense power in a form that no one has ever seen. And Goku tells Vegeta that he's very impressed of this power and that he should use it for good instead of evil. Vegeta names this form Mighty Vegeta and he takes a liking to his new power. Vegeta having this form, this makes him and Goku equal. Once they come out, everyone noticed the huge amount of power that they both have gained. Raditz, once you go in there, stay in your Super Saiyan form the entire time. Goku fused with Kami during this, and he rushes towards Raditz and Gohan, and he asks could he also come inside. They allow this because they feel the power that Piccolo now has, and plus he doesn't really need to eat food. My guy survives on purely water. In the future timeline, Gohan met Raditz before he died to the androids, and he also trained Gohan for a little bit. His mom also told him stories that Goku shared with her when they first met about the adventures that him, Raditz, and the other Saiyans went on. During the training, Raditz noticed that Gohan fights sort of like him because he's a very calculated fighter. During this time also, Piccolo and Raditz both noticed how crazy Gohan's potential is because of how fast Raditz he's growing. Gained full mastery over his Super Saiyan transformation. And he's nearly at the brink of obtaining Super Saiyan 2. Piccolo had also grown considerably and Gohan has actually achieved Super Saiyan 2 just like Goku. When the trio exit the time chamber, they're all welcomed by Goku and everybody else that's at the lookout. At this point, Gohan feels like he's beyond strong enough to fight the androids that's in his timeline. And he comes to terms with not staying in the present and fighting Cell with his dad and the others because he knows they're beyond strong enough to fight him. So he leaves back to the future and he destroys the androids with ease that's there. And Gohan lives his life in peace after this. But he also keeps up his training so a threat like this won't come again and leave him restless. With all the Saiyans being much stronger, they feel even more confident than what they did in the original. Raditz is the first to fight Cell. Hmm, Raditz, you better not disappoint me. Raditz transforms into Super Saiyan 1, and he stacks Kaioken times 3 on top of it. Raditz stands confidently in front of Cell, and Cell smirks. Well, Raditz, you've grown. From a distance, the cameraman and Mr. Satan are also watching this, and they're terrified. Raditz takes advantage of the fact that he can teleport like we've seen before, and he strikes Cell with multiple blows, hitting him critically. Raditz tries to land another punch on Cell, but Cell counters this punch with his own, and this makes Raditz and his hands meet, and the lightning sparks appear when they clash. The power of Raditz is too much for Cell. When Raditz gut punches Cell, he spits up Android 18. Cell starts to panic, and Raditz teleports Android 18 away, then comes back to hit Cell with the exact same punch, and Cell throws up Android 17. So now Cell is back at his original form, the Bugman form. No, it's not really the form name. Don't quote me on that. I'm just saying it. Cell runs away, and he prepares up a perfect Kamehameha wave, and Raditz charges up a, a times 10 double Sunday. As they blast begin to meet each other, Cell Blast begins to get overthrown by Raditz. Then he gets hit by the blast full force, and it destroys most of his body. Raditz, hurry up before he reforms! Raditz teleports in front of the dismantled Cell, and he shoots another blast, disintegrating him in an instant. Cell is finally taken care of, but Goku and Vegeta never got their turn to fight him. So Vegeta feels that this is the perfect moment to get his rematch with Goku. But before he does this... He wants to fight Raditz because he's interested in what Raditz could do now since he's shown great power during the fight with Cell. Kakarot, man, you will sell this another time. Raditz, come here and fight me now. Raditz flies over to Goku and Vegeta and Goku tells him, good luck. He's much stronger than the last time you fought him. Then he throws Raditz a sensor beam and Raditz gets the small Zenkai from this because of the damage he took during the fight with Cell. Both Vegeta and Raditz begin to fly over to the platform where Cell and him just fought. This would not be like the last time, Vegeta. I will not lose to you. Vegeta laughs, then he lets out a scream and transforms into his Super Saiyan form. But he takes it a step further, and a purple key begins to envelop his body, and it mixes in with his Super Saiyan aura. And his hair starts to flicker in and out of purple and blonde. Mr. Satan and his crew are beyond terrified at this point because they can sense that Vegeta's power is much more stronger than Cell's. 
Raditz transforms into his Super Saiyan form, and he screams out, times 10, Kaioken! Because he knows that Vegeta power is immense right now, and he has to take whatever he has a step further in his fight. Both fighters rush towards each other, and they clash instantly. As the two throw their punches, neither fighter has touched the other, until Vegeta knees Raditz in the stomach, and Raditz tries to teleport behind Vegeta to counter him with the punch, but Vegeta delivers a thunderous punch towards his face that sends him through a mountain. What's happening, Raditz? Where is the vigor you just had? Raditz gets up, and he screams out, Times 20! He flashes in front of Vegeta and throws a barrage of attacks that knocks Vegeta out of the sky. Once Vegeta hit the ground, Raditz charges up a double Sunday and a Saturday crash in one hand and the other in the other hand. Raditz combines these attacks and he screams out, Sunday crash! And throws it at Vegeta. And as the blast goes towards Vegeta, Vegeta charges up his key and he swats Raditz's attack away. Vegeta goes in to pummel Raditz and Raditz get hit by every kick and punch that Vegeta throws. You're weak, Raditz. You will always be this weak. After I kill you, I'm going to kill your stupid brother and destroy this worthless planet. Raditz falls out of Super Saiyan. He smashes the ground and he screams out, How am I this weak? I've trained and did the most that I could so that this would never happen again. Raditz feels pure anger at this point. And he knows inside of him that there's more power that he can bring out of him. But he just doesn't know what would be the catalyst to bring it out of him. As Raditz continues to bang the ground up, Vegeta charges up a big bang attack. This is the end, Raditz. Say goodbye. Goku raises his eyebrow like this because sparks of electricity begin to appear around Raditz. Hmm. He's beginning to transform. Rock starts to surround Radix as they come out of the ground, and Radix's hair starts to spike up. Radix then lets out a scream, and Vegeta shoots the Big Bang attack at Radix before he hears him. Super Saiyan 2 Radix catches the Big Bang attack in his hand, and he disperses it. Radix dashes towards Vegeta, and round 2 begins. Raditz takes advantage of his instant transmission again, and he lands crazy blows on Vegeta that Vegeta can't stop. Vegeta is barely keeping up at this point. Raditz slaps Vegeta out of the air, and he forms a key blast around his fist, and he blasts off towards Vegeta to hit him with it. Vegeta can't do anything but look up at Raditz as he approaches him. Once Raditz lands this attack on Vegeta, it creates a huge crater because of the impact that it had once Vegeta got hit. And now he's nearly dead. Raditz lifts up his hand and he forms a kid attack to finish Vegeta off. Is this my end? Raditz then shoots the key blast up in the air and Vegeta passes out. Raditz powered down soon after and he passes out next to Vegeta. Mr. Satan and his crew come out of hiding once they see both of the Saiyans are down. He starts to gloat about how he just finished both of them. Goku glares at Mr. Satan and Mr. Satan feels terrified and him and his crew run away. Goku goes to pick up both Raditz and Vegeta and he teleports them to Capsule Corp. Vegeta decides to stay on Earth during this time and him and Raditz and Goku. During this time, he starts to become more like the Vegeta that we know and love from the original. As he lived his life on Earth, he meets Chi Chi and her fiery personality attracts the prince and they get married and have a kid named Trunks. Raditz also starts a family during this time with Lunch and he has a son named Raditz Jr. during these seven years. Raditz and Vegeta and Goku has all trained together, and their relationship has grown into a strong friendship. Vegeta still has a couple of his demons, but he tries not to let it get in the way of his life. And he also doesn't neglect Trunks in this one, since Chi Chi is forcefully making him spend time with him, so Trunks gets to have a lot more training with Vegeta. Gohan potential is a little higher in this one because of Goku's increase in power. Gohan also obtains Super Saiyan the same way Goten would, and Goku is blown away by this. Because of Gohan having his mom there to help him, he becomes a genius with her help. He isn't really as big on studying as he was in the original since Chi Chi isn't his mom. So he takes a little bit into training with his dad more than anything since Goku is alive during this whole time. When the tournament starts, Gohan, Trunks, and Rodex Jr. beats everyone in their division. 
Trunks and Reddish Jr. are the ones up next to fight. Well, Trunks, this is anticipated. Hope you're ready to lose. Trunks smirks. Shut up, Junior. Better make sure you're better than last time when we trained. Once the fight begins, both Saiyans transforms into Super Saiyans. Wow, both of them has really gotten strong. They make us look like nothing when we're at their age. Radish Jr. and Trunks clashes instantly, and they seem to be evenly matched. As the fight goes on, neither of them has landed in an attack. Hey, Trunks, look over there. Your dad's leaving. Trunks turns around and looks at Vegeta, and Vegeta frowns at this, and Raditz Jr. blasts his Trunks out of the ring with a double Sunday. You cheater! Goku and Gohan starts to laugh at this because of the stunt that Raditz Jr. just pulled. Once Trunks go back to the stands, he apologizes to Vegeta, and Raditz pats his son on the back. Good job, my boy. Now you just have to defeat Gohan. The personality of Gohan isn't the same as it was in the original because of the different person that Goku is. You should have just quit right now just to save yourself the embarrassment, little cousin. Right as he grits his teeth and screams out, you're, you're older than me. You're not that old. Right as he transforms into a Super Saiyan, but Gohan doesn't transform. And right as he questions this in his head, but he also thinks Gohan is underestimating him. When right as Jr. finally rushes towards Gohan with the punch, Gohan catches his fist, then he smiles and his eyes turn yellow, and his hair rises, and he has transformed into the Akari form. And he throws Raditz to the side. He takes his transformation a little further, and he does what Goku did in the Namek Saga. He transforms into the false Super Saiyan Akari form that we've seen once before. Kakarot, why did you teach that boy that form? Goku laughs. <laughs> The little guy is just like me when I was a young man. It's only right if I give him that transformation. In the blink of an eye, Gohan rushes towards Raditz and he slams his fist in his gut. Raditz screams out in pain. Gohan covers his mouth and he grabs his hair and he smashes his head into the ring. I told you to quit, Raditz. Why did you want to listen? Gohan gets up and he kicks Raditz out of the arena and Raditz just sits there unconscious. The Supreme Kai watches the fight that just happened and he thinks to himself, wow, that kid's really strong. As the tournament progresses, Goku, Raditz, and Vegeta, and Piccolo all get their turn to fight. And the first fight up that we have is Goku versus Piccolo. Piccolo, keep in mind, Piccolo is also really strong at this point. He isn't a pushover. Once they go into the arena, Goku tells Piccolo that he better go all out. And this will be a fun fight. Piccolo throws off his clothing and he powers up to his full power. Bobbity is also watching this fight. But nobody pays attention to him because they can't sense him. And he also feels a really bad energy inside of Goku. Goku and, and Piccolo facing each other within the tournament. And that would go how you would expect. With Goku winning easily against Piccolo. Bobbity feels the malicious intent within Goku and Vegeta, and he hopes that he can take over both. But if not, then he can take over one and bring back Majin Buu with their power. The fight between Goku and Piccolo is done. Supreme Kai notices the imp on Spokovich and Yamo's head. He informs the Z fighters on the entire situation with Buu, and he asks for their help so that he won't destroy the universe. They agree to help him so that Majin Buu won't destroy their planet. Supreme Kai notices that Goku is the strongest because there is an immense power that roams around him. But he also feels divine key within Vegeta. Kai questions Vegeta on why does his power feel like this. And he finds out about Vegeta's horrible past when he would consume the fruit of the Tree of Might. Supreme Kai decides to put this off for right now so they can hurry up and destroy Majin Buu. But then later on when they're done with that... He will question Vegeta again on what was he doing with the fruits. When Spokovich and Yamu runs away from the tournament, the Saiyans follow them, and they arrive to Majin Buu's ship, and they destroy Spokovich and Yamu way before they even go in. Once they go in, Vegeta destroys everybody that walked in their path, but then when they caught themselves at a standstill, Bobbity then takes this as an opportunity to start to talk to Vegeta and control him. He wants to save Goku for later. Vegeta starts to scream and hold on to his head. Vegeta! What's wrong with you? Are you alright? What's happening? 
Supreme Kai runs over to Vegeta to tell him to fight Bobby's control, and he thinks to himself that if he gains control of Vegeta, Vegeta will push out his godly power and he would end the entire galaxy. Vegeta turns into a Super Saiyan and he screams out loudly, and his power starts to leak out of him, and the foot of might power that he has envelops his entire aura. When Vegeta finally stops transforming, he's become Majin Vegeta, and he states what he said in the original. When they arrive back to the tournament where Goku and Vegeta would face off, Goku tells Vegeta, you really went as far as to let yourself be controlled to face against me? Maybe I'll do the same thing to show you that I'll always be better than you, Vegeta. Goku finally lets himself be controlled by Bobbity. He closes his eyes and the M appears above his head. Prem Kai is terrified at this. These guys are insane. Why would he let himself be controlled just to fight? I just grabbed Supreme Kai's shoulder. My brother knows what he's doing. Trust me, you'll be okay. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan 2. Kakarot, at this level, you're nothing to me. Goku smirks, and electricity starts to rapidly spark around his body. And he lets out a scream, and his hair grows longer. Bobbity begins to get excited. This power bird brings back Majin Buu in no time. Goku has finally transformed into his Super Saiyan 3 form, but he notices that he's much stronger than he would originally be. He thinks to himself, maybe this is Bobby's control pushing his power. Goku moves in an instant and uppercuts Vegeta, and Vegeta flies into the air. Goku flies after him, and he punches Vegeta straight forward. And he grabs Vegeta's hair and flies over to a wasteland. Once they arrive to this wasteland, Goku throws Vegeta's body into the ground, and he flies into Vegeta to strike him. But Vegeta screams, and his power forces Goku to block the winds coming from him. Vegeta rushes towards Goku with the keyblade in his hand, but Goku blocks this attack, and he needs Vegeta in his stomach. And Vegeta follows up with the right hook and sends Goku flying. Vegeta catches up with Goku, and then he throws a barrage of attacks at him. After fighting for a while, both the Saiyans begin to feel like neither of them can end the fight. Because Goku doesn't want to kill Vegeta, and Vegeta just can't catch up to Goku's power. Vegeta lays on the ground on his back, and he looks up at the sky. Kakarot, you win. I'm done. Goku lifts up Vegeta, and he teleports both of them back to Supreme Kai so that he can reverse Bobbity's magic. Raditz gives both of them a sense of being, and they gain their Zenkai boots. Gohan and Trunks runs over to their dads and gives them a hug. While this happens, a surge of malevolent key appears, and all the Saiyans rushes towards this power, hoping that it's Majin Buu. Once the Saiyans will arrive, Buu kills Bobbity, and he directs his attention towards the others. Buu wants chocolate. I make you all into chocolate now. Everyone moves out of the way, and Raditz transforms into a Super Saiyan 2, and he rushes towards Buu to strike him. Raditz beats down Buu, and Buu gets really angry and forms Evil Buu. Once Evil Buu turns Majin Buu into chocolate, and he transforms into Super Buu, power skyrockets. Vegeta joins in the fight to help out Raditz so that he doesn't die. As they both fight him, they grow to be equal to Majin Buu's power. Trunks and Raditz Jr. and Gohan fly over to Goku, and Goku informs them on everything that has happened right now. He also tells them to take notes on the fight so that they can have something to fight with in the future. As the fight goes on, Goku grows impatient because he also wants to fight Majin Buu too, so he becomes anxious and he flies over to them. But before he does this, he tells Gohan, Gohan, use this as motivation to become stronger, and maybe one day you will reach my level. Goku teleports in front of Boo, and he strikes him in the face, sending him into the ground. It's my turn. You two have followed him long enough. I want some action, too. Both Vegeta and Raditz fly over to where Gohan, Trunks, and Raditz Jr. are, and Goku tells Majin Boo to come on. Majin Boo flies up to Goku's face, and he tells him, you're gonna die for that. Goku cracks his knuckles, and he smiles. He transforms straight to Super Saiyan 2, but while he transforming, his muscles begin to grow, and his eyes turn to orange instead of teal. The power that Goku has just shown blows everybody's mind, and they're all shocked because of the power he has. Wow, Gohan, your dad is incredible. If he had to grit his teeth, he was holding back again. Goku has just mixed his Akari form with Super Saiyan 3, and his power has Majin Buu terrified. Goku rushes in at Majin Buu, and he throws a barrage of attacks at him. 
Boo is being overwhelmed by the power of Goku, and he's angry. Goku doesn't give Boo the time to think or breathe, and he throws another barrage of attacks at him. Goku is really enjoying himself with this fight because he's going all out for once, and he's destroying Majin Boo. Because of this, he nearly kills Boo, and Boo starts to scream out in rage, and Goku bags back for a little bit. Boo transforms into Kid Boo. Boo tries to go in for Gohan, but Goku appears in front of him and kicks him away. Goku transforms back into Super Saiyan 2 because he's beyond tired. Aratus and Vegeta joins the fight and the trio triple teams Boo. Aratus forms the spirit bomb in the air to end the entire fight. Hey Gohan, do you want to fight also, son? You can come fight alongside me and Vegeta, and we can end this entire fight with these attacks that we will throw at him. As they're fighting, Boo screams and everybody get pushed away, and he goes in to fight Goku and Vegeta, and he just pummels them. He right, screams out to everybody on the ground to give him their power, and everyone raises their hand and makes Reddy Spirit Bomb huge. Raditz throws the ball at Majin Buu, but Boo catches it, and he starts to push it back. Goku charges up a double Sunday, and Gohan charges up a Kamehameha, and Vegeta charges up a final flash, and they all launch it towards Boo. Goku thinks to himself, what if I reincarnated as him in another dimension? Would he still be this evil? Or how powerful would I be? Boo is killed by all these combined attacks, and Fat Boo appears. Goku convinces Boo to be good and not be evil, and Hercule comes around with the little Videl, and Boo goes with him. Gohan and Videl lock eyes, and Gohan starts to blush. This junior in trunks teases Gohan about this incident. Prim Kai comes along, and he offers a sin to come train with him, and he persuades Vegeta the most to come along to his planet to train so that he can learn more about his divine key. He questions Vegeta more about what he was doing. Vegeta goes to accept his offer, and he hopes that this could be his chance to finally surpass Kakarot. Vegeta tells Chi Chi about his training and she complains to him, but he gets her to understand and she lets him go. Trunks asks his dad, could he come along with him? Chi Chi interrupts this and tells Trunks no and that he has to study. During his training, Vegeta learns some Kai magic, the Kai Kai, and he breaks the Z sword once he trains with it, releasing the Elder Kai. And he offered to unlock Vegeta's potential, but Vegeta denies it. Raditz trains at King's Kai planet, and he perfects the Super Saiyan 2 transformation. He uses Kaioken times 3 with it like it's nothing now. He stays on Earth, and he trains in his gravity chamber, and he sometimes trains with Raditz, and they all grow much stronger. The kids even grow much stronger because of the training that they do to hopefully catch up to their parents. During the time of peace that the Z-Fighters have, Beerus wakes up, and he wants to find the Super Saiyan God and fight him. He tells Beerus about Frieza's death and the Saiyans that still survive. He also mentioned that there's a Saiyan training with Akai as we speak, and they go over to meet Vegeta. Elder Kai, Supreme Kai, and Vegeta all see Beerus, and they all become beyond terrified. When they all battle Beerus, Beerus tells Vegeta, Ah, oh, look at you, Prince. You've grown up. You've become much more stronger also. I feel the divine key that you have. I'm really impressed. Vegeta tells Beerus, thank you, and that he's not the kid from back then. Beerus informs Vegeta about the Super Saiyan guy, and Vegeta tells him that he knows nothing of this transformation. But he probably is one because of his divine key. Beerus agrees with Vegeta, and they start their battle. Vegeta transforms into his full power Super Saiyan 2 mixed in with the power of Fruit of Might. Beerus is really impressed with the power that Vegeta has right now because he's never seen the mortal use the key that Vegeta is using right now. Vegeta rushes in at Beerus and throws a barrage of attacks, but Beerus catches his every punch and he slaps Vegeta out the way. Vegeta charges back at Beerus and he lands a punch on him, surprising everybody on the planet. Beerus starts to feel some excitement because of the blow that Vegeta just landed. Vegeta grows a smirk on his face and Beerus tells him not to get cocky. He throws a barrage of blasts at Vegeta and Vegeta has to dodge each one of these, but he isn't. He's getting hit by so many of them and he's feeling really hurt. Vegeta lets out a scream and he blows away Beerus' attacks and he rushes towards him to land another blow on him but then he lands a kick on him also sending Beerus to the ground Vegeta tries to go in for another attack Beerus moves out of the way and he kicks Vegeta in his gut and Vegeta de-transforms Beerus tells Vegeta that he's very impressed with his power and he does feel his godly key and that this would do for right now
but he also still wants to see a real Super Saiyan God. Vegeta tells Beerus about Goku and how strong he is, and that he has another brother that's training with another Kai right now. Beerus becomes more intrigued upon of learning of Radix's existence and that he's the one that killed Majin Buu. Well, not really killed Majin Buu, but you know, he threw the huge attack. So Whis teleports to King Kai's planet and King Kai begins to get terrified like everybody did before. He tells Raditz that this is the destroyer for Universe 7. He bows his head towards Lord Beerus and Lord Beerus is impressed at the Saiyan's manners. Beerus asks Raditz does he know anything of a Super Saiyan God and Raditz becomes very confused and say he doesn't know anything about it. Beerus decides to test Raditz strength anyway and they begin to do their fight. Raditz transforms into a Super Saiyan 2 stacked on top of Kaioken Raditz transforms into Super Saiyan 2 Kaioken times 20. Kaioken gives Raditz a major boost to all his stats, so Raditz rushes towards Beerus at full speed to try and land a couple of hits on him, but he wouldn't be able to land anything on him. Raditz throws a punch that almost connects with Beerus' face, but Beerus catches his hand and creates a shockwave between the two. Beerus raises his eyebrow at this, and he acknowledges Raditz' strength. Raditz uses instant transmission to teleport around Beerus to confuse him when he fights him, and when he throws strikes at him. But Beerus dodges every attack that Raditz throws. After the last blow that Raditz throws, Beerus almost goes in to chop his neck to knock him out. But Raditz's body moves before Beerus could even land a hand on him. This sudden movement of Raditz shocks everyone around. Beerus, did you see that, my lord? Alright, Raditz. That was good. Whoa, my body just moved on its own. You win, Beerus. I give up. Beerus and Whis smiles at this point and they just leave the planet to go to Earth. As Whis and Beerus teleports to Earth, Whis tells Beerus, Well, my lord, don't you think he has real potential? Do you know what he has just done? Beerus agrees. Raditz starts to leave to Earth to warn Goku about Beerus and not to do anything dumb that would maybe anger the cat and get him to destroy Goku. Once Beerus arrives to the party, he roams around and he eats some of the food and he just blatantly crashes the party. Beerus and we soon runs into Boma and the kids. Hey mom, what's this huge cat doing here? He's ruining things. Boma walks over to Beerus and she starts to spat at him saying all type of things. Beerus raises his hand and then he slaps Boma. Gohan gets very angry at what Beerus just did, but before he could power up, he looks up in the air and he feels that his father was watching him the whole time. Goku power starts to leak out of him and waves begin to shake the ship. Goku lets out a scream and he transforms straight into his Akari Super Saiyan 3 form. Hmm, this must be the infamous Kakarot. Goku rushes down towards Beerus and he connects three blows to Beerus' face that sends him flying. Goku constantly teleports throughout the ocean landing blows on Beerus. Then Beerus powers up and he punches Goku in the air, then appears up behind him and knocks him back down to the ground. Raditz finally arrives, then soon after he does, Vegeta does also, and they watch all the chaos that the two had just created. Goku charges back at Beerus, but Vegeta and Raditz appear before him and stop the berserk scene. Vegeta tells Goku that that's enough, Kakarot, and Goku goes back to his senses. Raditz informs Goku about everything that happened with Beerus meeting him and asking him about the Super Saiyan God transformation. And they all gather up the Dragon Balls and they ask Shinra how to obtain the form. They decide to let Goku fight Beerus once again since he's the strongest Saiyan around. And Beerus agrees with the decision because he thinks Goku is most definitely impressive. All the Saiyans surround Goku and pour their power into him, and Goku tails turns red, and his hair also turns that color. The power that Goku just gained feels crazy strong in this form, because he's much stronger than what he was in the original. Beerus is elated of Goku's new power. This is amazing. I wonder if I could still stack Ikari on top of this. Hmm, let me try it. Goku muscle starts to bulge, and his power has increased even more. Goku and Beerus flies to the sky and they begin their battle. Goku frowns and tells Beerus, this isn't going to go how I did it first. Goku rushes directly at Beerus and he lands a blow, but Beerus also did the same, which makes the two clash. Goku landed a right hook on Beerus, but Beerus also landed a left hook on him. Goku lasts way longer in this battle, and he also kind of lands thunderous attacks on Beerus. That has Beerus kind of rattled right now. Beerus has to use at least 15% of his power to at least hold Goku off. I'm going to destroy this planet if you don't fight harder than this. Goku uses his solar flare at times 50, and Beerus is blinded by this. Goku flies at full speed towards Beerus, and he surrounds Ki on his hand, and he punches Beerus in the face with this. Beerus is sent flying because of this attack, and Goku takes the opportunity to form a Kamehameha and shoot it at Beerus. Beerus is hit by this, and his clothing is all torn up. I see. I'm going to have to use more power with this thing. Beerus charges up to at least 25% of his power. 
Well, son, you're really grown accustomed to this power, I see. Goku smirks. Hmm, I'm not even going for power against you. I'm actually holding back. Beerus rushes towards Goku, and their fight starts again. During this second round, Goku falls out of the Super Saiyan Red form, and he falls back into Akari. But he's still holding his own against Beerus. Goku screams and transforms into a Super Saiyan, and Beerus decides he's growing tired of this fight, and he wants to end it. So he charges up a large blast, and he throws it at Goku. Goku tries his best to hold back the blast from hitting the planet, but it's too much for him, so it ends up consuming him. Goku screams in the blast and it dissipates. And Goku looks up at Beerus angrily and he tries to shoot a key blast at him. But before he could actually shoot it, his body gives up on him and he falls back down to Earth. Beerus goes to catch Goku's body before he starts to rocket toward the planet and they go back to partying and eating good food. Goku clenches his fist and he transforms into a Super Saiyan 2 after he's healed. Hey Destroyer, we're going to have a rematch and next time I'm not going to lose. Radis and Vegeta starts to sweat, and they palm their faces. Well, is that right, Kakarot? Whis offers the Saiyans to come to his planet and train, but Goku denies this offer, and Radis and Vegeta accepts. Beerus persuades Goku to come at least a few times, and Goku agrees to this, but he doesn't plan on staying as often as Radis or Vegeta would. Goku doesn't want to rely solely on his godly power like the others would, but he does know it's a huge boost, so he will often use it. Or at least try to use it. Goku wants to actually go deeper into his Saiyan power and actually try to find a power with inside itself that would impress his lineage. Like trying to actually use the power of the great ape into his one of his Super Saiyan forms. One day during Goku's training, he decides to put his idea to the test and he tries to transform into the great ape. Goku brings along the three younger Saiyans with him so he can train them also and show them the real power of a true Saiyan since they don't have tails. Now boys, stand back. If I lose control, call my name or try to get my attention to bring me back to my senses. Goku throws a fake moon into the sky and it activates and he transforms into a great ape. Wow, does his tail actually make him turn into that huge monkey? Goku tries to go Super Saiyan and as he expects, he loses control over himself. But he still has a little control. So he tries to keep himself from going on a rampage. So he just roars into the sky. Come on guys, we have to help my dad. The boys fly towards Goku and they scream at his name. And Goku notices them. And now he has full control over his ape power. And he goes back into his human form. Wow dad, you look totally different. And your power feels way stronger. Goku looks at his hand and he sees fur on his skin. I did it. He sees the red fur and he thinks to himself back to when he transformed into a Super Saiyan God. Could I possibly blend the power that I had then with this power like I do with the Akari? Goku closes his eyes and he powers up his key to try to find the godly key with inside himself, but he can't pull it out just yet. Goku goes to train the boys to learn the Super Saiyan 2 transformation. Goku also taught Trunks and Raditz Jr. the Akari form so they can stack it on top of the regular Super Saiyan form. You guys have to first master Super Saiyan 1 before you all rush into going into Super Saiyan 2. So you can stay in this form all day, every day to gain official mastery over it. And the boys soon will do this and gain mastery over that form because you know the hybrid potential that they all have. A couple days later, Beerus arrives to Earth and he goes directly to Goku to bring him to his planet. As Goku arrives, he greets the other Saiyans and he tells them about all the power that their kids have right now. And Vegeta is very shocked at the progress of Trunks. At this point, both Raditz and Vegeta has God Key and they're stronger than Goku, but not by a huge margin because Goku will soon catch up. During Goku's time on the planet, he often trains with the other Saiyans, but he mostly trains with Beerus because Beerus decides to mostly focus all his attention on Goku because he could actually be his new successor and he sort of sees himself within Goku. Vegeta and Raditz shows off Super Saiyan Blue to Goku and Goku is very happy at the power that they have. Now Kakarot, I'm beyond stronger than you. I also have a new form that I can show you guys. Goku shows off Super Saiyan 4 to the others, and they're not really surprised, but the Saiyans are because it's another form of Super Saiyan. But it's not as strong as the power that they have now. Goku trains purely in Super Saiyan 4 so that he can gain more mastery over it, and hopefully soak in some of the godly essence that's around him. 
Goku ends up staying on the planet longer than what he intended because everyone there is so much more stronger than what he was when he first went there. And because it is, he's grown so much more stronger. Goku meditates often and he gains full control over his godly power. And he can actually use the form that he used at the beginning of the Restoration F movie. One day when he was done meditating with Beerus and Whis, he gets up. And he transforms into his Super Saiyan 4 power. And he takes it a step further. Goku's yellow aura starts to appear, but it soon turns red. And his body starts to transform. Fur on Goku's arm and chest starts to turn into a lighter shade of red. And his hair turns completely red. Fiery aura then surrounds Goku. And he's finally done it. He's finally mixed his god power with his Super Saiyan 4 state. Everyone on the planet looks at Goku in shock. This power Kakarot, what is this? This is amazing. Beerus is also shocked and happy at what Goku just did. Goku closes his eyes and he charges up his key a little more. And he fully transforms into the Super Saiyan 4 God state. Wow, Kakarot, you've done it. You finally transformed into the state you wanted to accomplish. Goku decides to stay on Beerus planet a little longer so he can gain more control over his new power with strong people. And he's also surpassed the other Saiyans by a long margin. Well, Vegeta, it looks like we have to catch up to him once again. Goku leaves the planet after he gains more control over his new power. And when Frieza arrives, he's there to stop him. But he doesn't just fully just rush in to fight Frieza. He lets the kids fight him first. And he alerts Radis and Vegeta about what's going on on the, the planet. Sands and Piccolo destroy Frieza's army quite quickly. So Frieza would have stepped out of his ship sooner than what he would have predicted. <laughs> the monkeys procreated. The younger Sands rush at Frieza and they all would attack him at once. Guys, let's transform into Super Saiyan 2. With their increase of power, Frieza has to actually dodge a few blows and block a few of them that they send. Gohan lands a hook on Frieza, Raditz Jr. lands a gut punch on him, and Trunks sends him to the ocean with a kick. From a distance, Goku smiles at the damage that the boys have done to Frieza. Hmm, <laughs> they've grown a lot stronger. The boys all charge up their own attacks to send towards Frieza while he's down. Let's finish this, guys. Gohan forms a Kamehameha, Raditz charges up a double sande, and Trunks charges up a Gala gun. Piccolo also takes the opportunity to shoot a blast towards Frieza on his own. The combined attacks forces Frieza to transform straight to his fighting form, and he's angry. Frieza rushes in all at the three Saiyans, and he throws attacks that would leave them out of commission for the rest of the fight. Piccolo tries to stop Frieza, but Frieza chokes Piccolo with his tail, and he strikes Piccolo in the stomach, and this knocks Piccolo out. Vegeta and Raditz arrive to see the damage that Frieza has caused, and Goku finally makes his presence known as well. Goku goes in to feed everyone a sensu bean so they can heal, and he congratulates the kids of the hard fought battle that they just had. Frieza notices Lord Beerus, and he starts to feel fear, but he also sees Lord Beerus greeting Goku. This aggravates him to his core. Frieza, who brought you back to life? Frieza tells the Saiyans how he came back and how he's going to kill him and the training that he's done. I'm going to fight him first. Move out the way, Raditz. Vegeta flies towards Frieza, and Frieza starts making smart remarks about the prince. But Vegeta does no talking, and he goes in straight for a kick directly at Frieza's head. And this sends him flying. During this battle, Frieza and Vegeta are equally matched while Vegeta's in his base form. But Frieza shows off his new transformation, and he immediately goes in to strike Vegeta in his gut. Vegeta spits up blood from this attack, and Frieza starts to pummel Vegeta until Vegeta grabs his fist before he could throw another punch, and Vegeta smiles. A blue aura surrounds Vegeta, and he's now in Super Saiyan Blue. Vegeta squeezes Frieza's fist, and he strikes Frieza in the face, sending him flying. Right as teleports in front of Vegeta, it's my turn. You had fun long enough. The guy that shot Goku in the original tries to shoot Raditz, but Goku directs his attention towards him, and he shoots a key blast at him that kills him instantly. Vegeta flies over to Goku and the others, and Goku hands him a sensu man. Frieza has really gained so much power without even training that long. Vegeta agrees. Yeah, he's a real threat. We should kill him before this get any worse. Raditz transforms straight into his blue form and he rushes in at Frieza to finish the fight. But before he could reach Frieza, a metallic being appears and catches Raditz's fist and slaps him away with his tail. Brother, what are you doing here? I heard my little brother was brought back to life. So I decided to pay you a visit before you went and got yourself killed again. Frieza grits his teeth at his brother remark. Raditz is left in shock at the event that just occurred and how hard Cooler actually hit him. 
And this I'm going to say Cooler is beyond stronger than Frieza because he has more power than what Frieza would have had in the beginning. And since he never died, he actually caught wind of what the Saiyans were doing all these years. And this would cause him to train constantly over the years until he felt that he was strong enough to face them. Frieza flies over to Cooler. The monkeys are strong, brother. Watch out. Cooler laughs and he tells Frieza, I'm the strongest one on this planet. No one here could challenge me, including that oversized cat down there. Beerus frowns at the remark that Cooler just made, and he tells Goku to destroy this bug. Frieza rushes in at Raditz, and their battle begins once again. Cooler directs his attention towards Goku and Vegeta. He's mine, Vegeta. Goku flies over to Cooler, and he transforms straight into a Super Saiyan 4. Goku smirks. I'll be ready to die. Cooler rushes in at Goku at speeds that surprises everyone around, and he punches Goku into a mountain. But Goku blocked his attack, but his body still flew, and his arms are steaming. <sighs> He's stronger than what I would have expected. Cooler goes and shoots a dozen of death beams at Goku, but Goku swats away every one of them. Goku loses sight of Cooler, and he reappears and smashes his knee into Goku's stomach. Goku spits up blood because of this, and Cooler strikes him in his face. Throughout their fight, the two constantly clash, and they've both landed a couple powerful blows on each other. Enough game, San. Time to die. Cooler body starts to shine with a golden aura, and one of his eyes shines red. His power skyrockets, and he transforms into his golden form. During the fight with Raditz and Frieza, Raditz felt the power of Cooler skyrockets, and he looks over at this, and he starts to sweat. Frieza grits his teeth at his brother's power because he's jealous that his form isn't as strong, and Vegeta also looks on in shock. Goku sends a couple of key attacks at Cooler, but they do nothing to him, and this makes Cooler frown. Cooler blurs towards Goku and kicks him. Cooler then grabs Goku's face and he flies full speed into the ground, slamming his head into the earth. A crack forms in the landscape where they were because of this. Their battle starts to look one-sided with Cooler sending devastating blows at Goku that severely damages him. After just plainly beating Goku up, Cooler kicks around his body for a bit. This causes Vegeta to rush in to help Goku, so he strikes Cooler in the face. Cooler isn't phased by Vegeta's attack, and he starts to laugh. You weakling, what made you think that you could hurt me? Vegeta sends more attacks at Cooler, but Cooler is still unfazed. Raditz punches away Frieza, and he directs his attention straight towards Cooler, so they can go help Vegeta. With their power combined, they stand absolutely no match to Cooler, even though they're fighting together. After giving the Saiyans a chance to fight him, he starts to plainly destroy them, and beat them down. Cooler shoots two death beams at each of Raditz's arms, leaving holes where the blast hit. Cooler also shoots three more in his chest that does the same things as the ones that hit his arm. Raditz falls out of the sky and he can't fight anymore. Vegeta rushes in to try to land another attack on Cooler, but Cooler catches his hand and he punches a hole in Vegeta's chest, and Vegeta goes plummeting towards the earth. Pathetic. Each of you monkeys are weak. Frieza flies next to his brother so that they can start to both destroy the planet, but a fiery aura shoots from out of the ground into the air. Raditz smiles at this because he knows exactly what this is. Took him long enough. Raditz Jr. and Trucks rush over to their dads to feed them a sensu bean before they die, and both Raditz and Vegeta wakes up with Zenkai boost. Goku rises from the ground, and he doesn't look too happy. Frieza starts to sweat intensely because of Goku's power feels terrifying. Goku has entered his divine Super Saiyan 4 transformation. Before Frieza or his brother could digest what just happened to Goku, Frieza's head falls off in what seems like a blink of an eye. As Cooler watches Frieza's body fall to the ground, he starts to feel a sense of fear. Goku appears in front of Cooler with Frieza's head in his hand. Cooler grits his teeth at seeing Goku with Frieza's head in his hand, and he rushes in to try to strike Goku and take Frieza's head back. Goku teleports away from Cooler before Cooler could reach him. Cooler looks around to try to find Goku, but he can't see him or sense his power since Goku is using Divine Key right now. Until Goku tells Cooler here, and he throws Frieza's head into the air. Cooler goes in to try to catch him. Before he could reach his head, 
Goku teleports in front of Cooler and smashes his fist into his face, sending Cooler flying. Goku appears behind Cooler once again and he kicks his body into the air. Then he teleports to the air and backflips and kicks Cooler back down to the ground. Before Cooler could get up to catch his balance, Goku appears before him and he kicks him in the face. And Cooler goes flying once again. As Cooler flies to the air, he catches his composure and he starts to charge up a supernova to destroy the entire planet. Goku says it's time to end this, and he charges at Cooler with the Dragon Fist, and he strikes Cooler with it, killing him instantly, and the supernova disappears. As Cooler's body falls to the ground, Goku goes towards it, and he charges up a Hakai. He looks at Beerus, and he smiles, and he dissipates the Hakai, and just shoots a regular key wave at Cooler, disintegrating his body instantly. Goku flies over to the others, and he tells them that they enjoy the show. Kakarot, what was that? Did you just use a Hakai? I don't know what you're talking about, Vegeta. I didn't use anything. As the months go on, the Saiyans train at Beerus' planet often, and they have all gained greater power. Vegeta also learned the Super Saiyan Evolution transformation, but he hasn't showed anyone yet because he wants to use it as his trump card. Chompa teleports to the Universe 7 to tell Beerus that he wants the Super Dragon Balls and Earth because of his good food. Chompa then looks around to see everyone training and Goku sparring with Beerus. Hmm, who could this be? Goku introduces himself to Champa, and Beerus tells him that this is his rival. Champa feels jealous because he doesn't have a rival, and Beerus tells Champa that Goku may be stronger than him, and that he's his successor. The Universe 6 and 7 tournament happens. The younger Sangs ask to join. Raditz and Vegeta tells their kids no, but Goku actually lets Gohan join because he's pretty strong for his age. Once they all complete their test, Gohan is actually the first up to fight, and he fights the Big Bear from the beginning. <laughs> this is gonna be easy. Gohan rushes in at him, and he strikes him in the stomach with a thunderous blow. But the bear seems unfazed by this. You're gonna have to do better than that, kid. Gohan rushes back, and he envelops Ki around his arms and hands, and he strikes him once again. But this time, he doesn't go back, and he just keeps punching him, sending him back closer to the edge of the arena. Once the bear tries to fight back, Gohan screams out, Solar Flare! And he strikes him in his face and sends him out of the arena. Bulma and the rest of the kids stands, cheers on from the stands, congratulating Gohan on his first win. Frost comes down, and Gohan remembers that he looks so much like Frieza. So Gohan transforms into a Super Saiyan 2 immediately. Once their battle begins, Frost goes into his final form, and both of the fighters start to clash. Frost ends up using his cheating poisoning technique and Gohan gets weaker and weaker and he goes from Super Saiyan 2 to Super Saiyan 1, then to Akari. Then Frost takes advantage of Gohan's weakness and he kicks him out of the arena. Trunks and Raditz run down to comfort Gohan and Frost walks up to them and they all get scared. Frost offers a hand to Gohan and he lifts him up and says some thank you for the good fight. Everyone in Universe 7 thinks, wow. He isn't like Frieza at all. Piccolo goes in to fight Frost and he actually beats him up pretty bad until Frost poisons him and he gets out of commission. Everyone is confused by this because Piccolo was just winning. Jocko then accuses Frost of cheating and the ref checks him and confirms this. Then Chopper screams out that he's going to destroy him and Frost forfeits until Vegeta screams out no, he's going to be the one to face him so he doesn't have to forfeit. Piccolo does. Vegeta and Frost begin their fight, and Vegeta just pummeled Frost before he could poison him, and he sends him out of the arena. And Hit gets Frost, and he beats him down. The robot then comes out, and him and Vegeta fight goes how it did in the original, and Vegeta just beats him. Once Hit comes out, everyone thinks that he's a threat, and Vegeta doesn't want to take this fight lightly because of the presence that Hit gives off. Once their fight starts, Vegeta goes straight into Super Saiyan Blue and Hit stops him with the time skip over and over again. And Vegeta can't really catch this until he finally goes into Blue Evolution. Mm. So this is where he's been hiding. Vegeta goes in at Hit and he finally catches the time skip and he lands a thunderous strike on Hit's face that sends Hit flying. Hit catches his composure and he uses pure progress, making himself even stronger. When Vegeta and Hit were fighting. And during this fight, Vegeta gains the upper hand on Hit and he takes a page out of Raditz's book of attacks. And he uses his Kai Kai to his advantage. And he teleports all around Hit and throws attacks at him. He figures out the time skip attack pattern and he even strikes Hit when he does it. The power of Super Saiyan Blue Evolution is too much for Hit to take on. And Vegeta strikes him off the platform. 
Once Hit teleports back to the team of Chompas, Chompa threatens to destroy each and every one of the fighters until Goku walks over there and he tells him not to do that. Chompa feels that this is an insult to his power. Get away from here, mortal, before I have to destroy you alongside them. Chompa puts his hand up at Goku and Goku laughs at Chompa and lets some of his power leak out of him. I don't want to become the new destroyer of Universe 6 by killing you here. The Warriors of Universe 6 is completely shocked that Goku is standing up to Champa, and they're also scared of how much power is emanating off of his body. Before everything could escalate even further, Beerus lets out a terrifying scream and Champa looks over and does the exact thing. Lord Zeno? Goku and Zeno aren't friends in this one because Goku isn't an idiot and he doesn't go down there to talk to Zeno. But he does find this guy interested because of both the Shores being terrified of him. Zeno tells the Shores, why wasn't he invited to this tournament? It looks like it would have been a lot of fun to watch. Goku decides to speak and he tells Zeno that there could be another one between each and every universe. And Zeno loves this idea and he thinks about it and he disappears alongside his guards. Champa decides not to destroy his fighters and Goku laughs and walks back over to his universe. Chompa grits his teeth at Goku because he stood up to him. As Goku's walking over there to his place, Beerus and Whis looks at him and Whis tells him, Well, Kakarot, who universe do you want to take over? This one or that one? Beerus glares at Whis for this comment. Everyone then proceeds to teleport back to their universe and a couple days later, future Gohan appears back in the past and he tries to strike Vegeta as soon as he arrives. Gohan, what are you doing? Vegeta catches his fist and Gohan is furious. How did you get here? Vegeta punches Gohan in the stomach and Gohan calms down because he's winded. Gohan soon explains the whole Vegeta Black situation. Goku laughs. Well, Vegeta, somebody is pretending to be you. I wonder who's stronger, you or him. Beerus gets on the mortals about playing with time and Kid Gohan sees and meets himself. A black rift appears in the sky and Vegeta steps out and Whis and Vegeta sees the same ring on his hand and they think to themselves that this ring that he has on is from the Kais. Vegeta looks at Black and he tells him what is this and how did you get this ring? Vegeta Black smiles at Vegeta and he rushes in to fight him. Vegeta transforms into his Super Saiyan form and he goes in to beat down Black. Vegeta doesn't give Black the time to recover or gain his composure because he consistently beats him. Because of Black fighting the original Vegeta, his body is becoming more stronger. Black knows that he has a power inside of him, but he doesn't yet know how to bring it out of him because he can't get the time to even breathe and calculate his next moves while fighting Vegeta. Before Vegeta could kill Black, a portal appears and he sucks Black back into the future. Until the next time, Vegeta, Black laughs as he gets sucked into the rift and Vegeta is furious. After this occurrence, Beerus and Whis goes back to the universe that the time rings come from. Vegeta is also curious about this and he tells Beerus, could he come alongside him because he's interested in this whole situation as well. Beerus allows Vegeta to come, and as they arrive, they meet Zamasu and Guasu. Beerus also includes that Vegeta has trained under Akai, and he has made some of the Kai moves some of his own. Because of Zamasu's hate of mortals, he clenches his fist at this, and Vegeta is the only one to notice this. Guasu introduces Zamasu to Vegeta, and he thinks it would be a better way for Zamasu to understand mortals if he fought one that worked alongside a Supreme Kai just like him. Vegeta accepts this proposal, and he squares off with Zamasu, and they begin their fight. Zamasu goes in for a punch at Vegeta, but Vegeta catches his hand and kicks him away. Zamasu powers up and forms a keyblade around his hand, and Vegeta realizes that this power feels very familiar. Beerus and Whis also notice this. Vegeta goes to transform into his mighty Vegeta form, and Zamasu is aggravated at the power Vegeta has just summoned. Zamasu tries to cut Vegeta down, but Vegeta blocks every attack that he sends, and he counters with a punch in his face, causing Zamasu to pass out. Vegeta scoffs at Zamasu's power, and he calls him a weakling. Guasu compliments Vegeta's power, and the trio return back to their universe. Beerus, I don't trust that Zamasu guy. His power feels like the other version of me takes heed of what Vegeta just said and he decides to leave this to the mortals to entertain. Back on Earth, Gohan is there with his family and Kid Gohan feels weird seeing an older version of himself. 
And Goku isn't also pleased that Gohan has come back to the past for the second time begging for help because of his weakness. Follow me, Gohan. Both Gohans look at each other in confusion of which one he's talking to, so they both follow him. Goku flies off to a forest and the boys follow him. And once the Saiyans arrive to the forest, Goku tells the older Gohan to power up to his full power because he's going to spar with Kid Gohan. Gohan starts to transform and as his power rises, Goku doesn't look pretty impressed at his power and he is disappointed in this. Future Gohan has now entered his Super Saiyan 2 form. Okay dad, this is my max. Teen Gohan laughs at Future Gohan because of his show of power. How is this your full power? And you're supposed to be the older version of me. Gohan looks on in confusion because the Super Saiyan 2 form was the strongest transformation when he was here the last time. Future Gohan then becomes even more confused when he sees Teen Gohan transforms into a Super Saiyan 2 as well. But he takes it a step further and adds on the Akari form with it. Teen Gohan then rushes towards Future Gohan at great speeds and delivers a thunderous right hook towards Gohan's face. Future Gohan is blown away at what just happened because he assumed that Teen Gohan would be much weaker because he's so young. Well, kid, you're better than what I expected. Maybe I don't have to go easy on you like I thought. Teen Gohan scoffs. And he begins to throw a fury of well-timed attacks at future Gohan. And he would have a hard time defending against this. So Dajin got the way and blocking some of the attacks would hurt more than Gohan would have thought. After fighting for a while, the two are seemingly evenly matched. Goku then decides to step into their battle and he stops the entire thing by going in and catching each of their fists. Goku looks at Teen Gohan. You did well, son. Now take a break and just watch for now on. Goku directs his gaze towards Future Gohan. Now, it's my time to fight you. The ground starts to shake, and Goku isn't very happy. He's actually disappointed at Future Gohan. Uh-oh, he's mad. I feel bad for that guy. A golden aura envelops Goku's body, and he transforms into his Super Saiyan 4 state. Gohan starts to smile at his dad's power, and he tries to praise Goku. But before he could say anything... Goku appears in front of him and smashes his fist into his face. Gohan is sent flying through trees and before he could catch himself, Goku kicks him in the back and he goes flying once again and he crashes into a boulder. You're weak. You let yourself and your world be taken over once again and now you're back begging for help. Goku punches Gohan in the stomach. If you come back here one more time begging for my help while you're this weak, you're going to regret it. Goku then proceeds to punch Gohan multiple times in his stomach and Gohan spits up tons of blood and he puts his head down and falls out of Super Saiyan 2. Goku then walks away from future Gohan's body and Teen Gohan feels very sad for the future version of himself. Goku tells Teen Gohan to feed him a sensu bean. Gohan recovers and he promises his dad he'll get stronger and make him proud and not be such a disappointment. Since Gohan still has his tail, Goku decides to train Gohan so that he can gain Super Saiyan 4. Because maybe with the rage that he feels and the potential that he has, he has the ability to exceed past the form and achieve something higher. Goku then lets Gohan know about all the steps to attain the form. Once Gohan is ready, Goku throws a fake moon into the sky and he starts to transform. Because Gohan has never mastered this form, he loses control and he starts to destroy the area. Control it, son. Goku flies in front of Gohan and he regains his senses. Gohan then powers up and he transforms into a Super Saiyan and he loses his control once again. But this time, it's even worse than before since the Super Saiyan of Great Ape is so much more powerful. It takes a lot longer for him to regain his senses, but once he does... He lets out a monstrous roar into the sky and he starts to transform back into his original state. How do you feel, son? Gohan opens his fist and he looks at the fur on his body. It feels amazing. This power is overwhelming. Teen Gohan then goes in to fly towards Future Gohan and land a punch on him. But this time, Future Gohan catches his fist and they both smirk at each other because they now recognize that Future Gohan is so much more powerful. The trio all then begin 
to train with each other to help future Gohan gain more control over his new power. And Gohan actually reached new heights with this new power of his. Vegeta finally arrives back to Earth and he senses the power that future Gohan has just attained. And he smirks at the boy's growth. A couple of days later, Vegeta, Gohan, and Goku make their way back to the future. And Vegeta is the first one to fight Black. Vegeta transforms straight into his Super Saiyan Blue form and he immediately starts to overwhelm Black. And while they're fighting, Black is growing immensely and he grows accustomed to his Saiyan body because he's fighting the original Vegeta even more. And he eventually starts to hold his own during their battle. During the time Black was away, he started to understand more about his power and how to push himself even further. So he transforms into the Rose state and everyone is very shocked at the power that he has just shown. Now, mortals, playtime has just begun. Now you're going to die. Black rushes in at Vegeta and he strikes him multiple times with the Keyblade and he creates the scythe that he did in the original to strike Vegeta with. And Vegeta is holding his own, but Black is very strong and he can't fight against him much for long. So he gets out of the fight and future Gohan goes in and he transforms straight into his Super Saiyan 4 state. I know with this form that his Gohan has, Super Saiyan 4 may not be superior to Blue or Rose. But it is strong because of Gohan's potential and because of how quick he grows. During the fight with Black and Gohan, Gohan actually holds his own against Black. And he surprises Black because of how strong he is now. Black eventually knocks Gohan out of the battle and Gohan is enraged at his weakness. So Vegeta goes back into the battle. But with this time, he shows off even more power than he did the last time. Vegeta lets out a roar and he transforms once again. Vegeta transforms into Blue Evolution. And he rushes in at Black and gives him an even harder fight. And he actually is winning this time. But then the original Zamasu appears and shocks Vegeta. Zamasu? It's you! I know that you had something to do with this. Zamasu starts to laugh and he tells everyone there about the Zero Mortal Operation. That him and Black are going to commence. Zamasu also tells Vegeta how he's the one that stole his body. Vegeta is livid at this. And he rushes towards Zamasu and he beats him down. But as Vegeta throw attacks that will kill Zamasu, he isn't dying. And he's actually regenerating. Zamasu then starts to laugh at this. Because then he tells Vegeta how he's immortal. Goku raises an eyebrow at this. And he thinks to himself that maybe he can try this new skill out that he's been working on. But he isn't ready to enter the fight just yet. The fight with Gohan and Black begins again. And Vegeta is going at it with Zamasu, breaking him down constantly. Black is overwhelming Gohan once again. And he starts to make fun of Gohan about how he's destroyed his planet and how he's going to kill everyone that he knows and loves. Gohan is beyond angry at Black and whatever he's saying. And he starts to think to himself about how he doesn't want to be a disappointment to his father anymore. So he starts to put up more of a fight towards Black. But this still does nothing for him and Black consistently beats him down. Eventually... Black and Zamasu fuses, and they become few with Zamasu, and their power has reached new heights. And Gohan is angry at this because they keep finding ways to surpass him and beat him once again. Few Zamasu begins to gloat about his new power, and Gohan starts to feel even more raised than what he did before. And he lets out a huge roar, transforming into a new state. Goku thinks to himself that his son has did what he couldn't have done. And he feels very proud of future Gohan. Vegeta is also blown aback about the power that Gohan is letting out. As Gohan is transforming, his hair starts to grow even longer. And it turns into a white color. And his fur also turns white. Gohan has now unlocked Super Saiyan 5. And this is the first time that anyone has seen this form. This is the end for you, Black. Gohan then rushes in at Zamasu and he starts to pummel him. Their fight goes on. Fuel Zamasu begins to overwhelm Gohan once again. But it isn't how he did once before. He actually has had trouble fighting Gohan. And as a result to Gohan not giving up and continuing to fight, he forms a double Kamehameha and he throws it towards Zamasu. And Zamasu is enveloped by this attack because he can't really hold it back. 
Once the attack dissipates, Zamasu is left there with purple goop on one side of his body. And Zamasu is beyond angry at this, so he lets out a scream and his body starts to grow. But the purple side doesn't heal back and he's shocked at this because he's an immortal. But then he remembers that Vegeta Black isn't an immortal and he can actually die. And he thinks to himself that maybe that side of him has died and that's why his body is like this. Zamasu rushes at Vegeta and Gohan and he starts to pummel them. And once the fight starts to go on for a while, they all become tired and Gohan and Vegeta feel that they can't fight him anymore because they are exhausted. And this is when Goku takes the time to actually step into the battle. He appears in front of both of the Saiyans and he tells them that it's his turn. Goku smirks at Zamasu and Zamasu is angry so he rushes in at Goku but before he could touch him a red fiery tornado surrounds Goku's body and he transforms into his Super Saiyan God 4 state and he catches Zamasu's fist. You see I'm not like them. My power far exceeds anything that they have and due to that this will be the last fight that you ever fight. Zamasu starts to feel a sense of fear at the words Goku just let out and he scoots back because of this and Goku rushes in at him and he strikes him in his stomach and this leaves Zamasu spitting up blood. Zamasu regains his composure and he starts to summon his scythe and he tries to go in to fight Goku with it. But Goku dodges every attack that Zamasu sends and he proceeds to strike him with attacks that leaves his body in pain. What are you? You can't be just immortal. This isn't right. I shouldn't be losing like this. Goku starts to laugh at Zamasu and he goes in to pummel him once again. Once Zamasu is left on the ground, Goku's eyes turns purple and he lets out a crazy laugh and he holds out his hand towards Zamasu's face. Hakai. Zamasu starts to scream out in agony and his body starts to dissipate into purple particles. Goku starts to laugh crazily even more and his power starts to shoot into the air and a destructive aura appears around his body and his power starts to disintegrate everything around him. As this is happening, Gohan looks at his dad in pure shock because the power that he's using now is unlike anything he has ever witnessed before. But Vegeta knows good and well what this is. Goku eventually stops charging up his power and he comes out of the state that he was just in. He walks over to congratulate his son on the new power that he has just acquired. Gohan promises to his dad that he'll keep training and become even stronger. Goku smiles at this and him and Vegeta return back to the past. Once the two Saiyans arrive, they meet an angry Raditz. Well, you two had to just leave me and go have all the fun to yourselves, huh? As time progresses, Goku trains more with Beerus to gain more control over his destructive power because he knows that the power could take control over him at any moment when he lets it out. This is working more with Whis to learn how to access the Ultra Instinct and Vegeta is working on his own power with Whis so that he won't have to step in Raditz or Kakarot's footsteps. During the Saiyan's training, the Grand Priest appears out of nowhere and everyone is shocked at this and Beerus forces each of the Saiyans to bow before him. The Grand Priest then tells everyone that they're gonna have a match before the actual tournament because Zeno is very impatient and he wants to see each of the fighters fight as soon as possible. Goku is fired up at this because he's happy that he'll be able to fight each of the strongest fighters from every universe. The Grand Prix makes it very clear to each every one of the universes that they will need 10 fighters to enter the Tournament of Power. For the exhibition match, they will only need a couple. Goku decides he'll bring Gohan, Majin Buu alongside him. Beerus questions if Gohan is a good participant, but Goku tells him to trust his judgment, and Beerus complies. Everyone arrives to the exhibition arena. The Grand Prix tells everyone when the real tournament starts, any universe that gets all their fighters knocked off the platform will be erased from existence. The Grand Prix also informs everyone of the universal rankings, the mortal levels, and the wishes that they can get when they win the tournament from the Super Dragon Balls. Everyone that is attending the exhibition match of right now all becomes angry at Goku because they think since he opened his mouth, this entire thing is happening. When Baragamo goes down to the platform, he starts to do his speech like he did in the original and he gives Zeno a proposal. Goku notices the hooded figure and he gets intrigued by this because he's mysterious. 
Bergamo tells Goku to come down and he flies down to the platform. The Grand Priest informs everyone that if Kakarot loses this match, any universe that is kicked out of the game will not be erased. But if Kakarot does win this match, then the same rules will still apply. Goku thinks to himself that if he loses here, then everyone in the actual tournament will underestimate him and it will make things for him much easier to knock out most of the fighters so he can get his wish from the Dragon Balls. Before they could get ready to fight, Goku suppresses his power by a lot. Do you think you could actually beat me? You're a weakling. Maragamo starts to laugh and then he rushes towards Goku to attack him. Goku dodges most of his punches and his kicks, but he also counters with a few attacks. Bergamo starts to grow in size and Goku smirks because this is when he'll lose the battle. Bergamo starts to pummel Goku and Goku pretends like he's doing everything he can, but he can't just defend out Bergamo in the battle. Champa proceeds to let out a loud laugh at Goku's weakness, and the other destroyers follow up with a laugh of their own. Beerus is the only destroyer that is silent at this point because he knows what Goku is actually capable of. But he is also glad that Goku's losing this because no universe will be destroyed. Bergamo eventually beats Goku and he laughs out loud as well and tells everyone that he's the savior because he's defeated Kakarot. Gohan flies down to help his dad back up and they fly back to the stands. As they're flying, Goku holds his head down and he smirks, but nobody would notice this besides Tapo because he was paying close attention to Goku and he questions this in his head, but he decides to keep it away since Goku is the one who lost. The other fighters will eventually fight and Top would eventually show himself because he'll be the one who wins the entire exhibition and he shows off his power to each of the universes. Goku looks on at this and he knew that he was right to be interested in who this guy was because he's really strong. Once Universe 11 is announced as the winners, the other universe leave and Champa tells Beerus that his successor is a disappointment before he leaves also. Once Beerus and the others get back to Earth, Goku decides that he'll choose his 10 fighters and they'll consist of Android 18, Android 17, Vegeta, Raditz, Gohan, Piccolo, Raditz Jr., and Trunks. Goku realizes that he doesn't actually have a 10th fighter and Vegeta calls him an idiot because of this. Unknown to everyone though, Goku does have someone in mind, but he decides to tell them a little later. As the days go on, Goku gather up all the members and they all trained until the day of the tournament. Goku decides to help Vegeta and Raditz train the boys because it seems that they grow much stronger when they fight together. Each of the three Saiyans end up learning Super Saiyan 3. But Raditz also has a good idea that he'll think will be the best for the kids. He tells Vegeta and Goku that they should do the Super Saiyan God ritual on the kids because this would be even more of a boost of power than Super Saiyan 3 would be. Vegeta and Raditz would solely help the boys gain more control over this form and be able to tap in and out of it. Piccolo trains with Majin Buu and they grow more powerful together also. The androids train together with Krillin and they all experience more growth also. Eventually, the tournament day becomes closer and Goku tells everyone that he wants to bring back Cooler for a day so that he can be their 10th fighter. Everyone loses their mind because Cooler isn't trustworthy and Goku ensures them that he'll help him be under control. And if he does betray them, Goku will finish him off once and for all. Goku is sent to the afterlife to get Cooler, and he's wrapped up in a cocoon in a flowery place. Goku informs Cooler about the entire tournament and how if Cooler wins, he can gain a wish from the Super Dragon Balls. And Cooler is intrigued by this because there could be many things that he could wish for. Goku then proceeds to slice Cooler from his cocoon, and Cooler stretches his arms and flares his power. Goku walks away from Cooler to return back to Earth, but before they leave, Goku turns his head at Cooler so Cooler could see half of his face and one of his eyes turn purple. If you think about betraying us even once, I will destroy you. The grass that Goku's stepping on right now starts to disappear from the destructive energy that he's letting out, and Cooler starts to sweat and then nods his head. Once they return, everyone sees Cooler with the halo above his head, and they all get on guard. Goku lets them all know that they don't have to worry about anything. He and Cooler has come to a mutual understanding. Cooler then crosses his arms and scoffs, which then tells everyone that they had to decide who their team captain would be, and Goku thinks that Piccolo is the best fit to be the captain. Everyone else thinks about this, and they actually end up agreeing to this. Which then teleports everyone to the tournament stage and the entire team look around in amazement at how the entire thing looks. Every universe that is there begin to laugh at Universe 7 because they're still all under the impression that they're all so weak. 
Kaba runs over to Vegeta and he greets him. And he sees Trunks also. And he assumes that Trunks is Vegeta's son. Vegeta introduces Trunks to Kaba and Gohan walks over to Kaba. I hope you're ready to lose, Kaba. Kaba begins to laugh. And Kaelin Khalifa walks over to the Saiyan group. And Raditz Jiren blushes as she sees Khalifa. The older Raditz notices Jiren. And he tells Goku and Vegeta that that guy seems very powerful. Goku walks over to meet Jiren, but Jiren moves behind him in an instant, and everyone is shocked at his speed. But Goku isn't phased by this. Jiren tells Goku to move away, and Goku smirks and walks away. Frost and Cooler also notices each other, but Cooler decides that he doesn't want anything to do with him, because he reminds him too much of his brother. The tournament eventually begins, and everyone splits up into three groups. The younger three Saiyans stick together, Piccolo leaves with the androids, Cooler takes off by himself because he really has no chemistry with everyone else. The three older Saiyans decide to stick together. Goku decides that they should go find Burrow to almost universe and knock each one of them out first because Goku wants to show Bergamo that he's nowhere near his level. Finding them wouldn't be as hard as they would have thought because Baragama was also heading towards Goku to get him out early as well because he's still under the impression that Goku is incredibly weak. As soon as they lock eyes, Goku rushes in at Baragamo at speeds he wouldn't have been able to see and he punches right through his shoulder. Once Baragamo flies away, Goku dashes off to catch him and he just beats his body down. After just beating him up for a bit, Goku takes his body and drags him to the edge and throws him off. The destroyer of Universe 9 is in shock because his entire universe is losing so quickly by the god that everyone deemed as a weakling. Eventually, the entire Universe 9 is knocked off because of Goku's group. The androids and Piccolo runs into Universe 3 and they see the doctor that created all those robots around him. And he reminds them so much of Dr. Jiro and they begin to fight him and his robots. The younger three Saiyans are in a league of their own. The combined power of the three is enough to face off any of the lower contenders. They run around and fight multiple enemies and knock them off. While wandering around, they end up running into Kaba's group, and at this point, Kaba has already gained the Super Saiyan 2 form, but he isn't as beat up as he was in the original because Vegeta helped him out a little more so that when he will meet Trunks, he will be able to use as much power as he can. Trunks transforms directly into a Super Saiyan 2, and he rushes towards Kaba, and he and Kaba begin to fight. Khalifa wants to fight Raditz Jr., and he blushes when she tells him this. She then begins to rush towards him, and they begin their battle as well. Gohan is left alone with Kale, but she doesn't look like she wants to fight, so he leaves her alone and just watches out for the area. As the fight with Raditz Jr. and Khalifa progresses, Kale begins to start feeling jealous because Khalifa is enjoying her fight with Raditz a little too much, and she starts to lose control and transforms into her legendary Super Saiyan form. The wind from her power almost knocks Khalifa out of the ring, but Raditz Jr. powers up and he rushes to catch her, and she thanks him for this, and his face turns entirely red. After Kale is finished transforming, she screams out Raditz's name, and she begins to rush towards him at great speeds. Gohan smiles at this because now he finally gets to join in the action. He transforms straight into his Super Saiyan 3 form, and he rushes towards Kale before she can reach Raditz Jr., and he kicks her away so she could not reach him. Kale looks at Gohan and she rushes in to fight him now. Gohan holds his own against her, but she quickly gains the upper hand because her power is growing consistently as she fights. Gohan decides that he should enter his Super Saiyan God form and Trunks and Kappa stop their fight to go help him out to stop Kale. While Gohan is in this form, he quickly subdues Kale and she starts to lose it even more. Jiren eventually arrives and he punches Kale in her face, sending her flying. Kale tries to attack Jiren, but Jiren shoots a blast at her and sends her flying once again. Kaba charges up his galactic cannon and he shoots it at Jiren, but Jiren smacks his attack away and he rushes in at Kaba to strike him in his stomach. And when he tries to strike him once again, he arrives and does his time skip to freeze Jiren in place, and Kaba gets away. The fight between Jiren and Hit goes how it did in the original, and Hit ends up losing. Gohan then rushes towards Jiren to fight him, but Jiren is blocking all his attacks. Eventually, Raditz Jiren and Trucks rushes over also to help Gohan, and all three of them gang up on Jiren to try to get him out of the ring. The Saiyans are fighting in sync to beat Jiren, but it looks like it isn't doing anything to him. The boys all jump back and charge up their attacks, and they shoot each one of them all at the same time, making them combine into just one attack. 
An explosion happens and Jiren is hit by this attack, but when the smoke goes away, Jiren has his arms crossed with the dome around his body. The boys are all shocked at this because Jiren wasn't phased at all. Jiren then disappears out of their sight and the boys all look around for him until Raditz Jr. is sent flying with a kick from Jiren. Gohan and Trunks screams Raditz names and Jiren strikes both of them in their face. But before he could throw them off the ring, Raditz appears and blares in front of him in Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken and strikes him in his face, causing him to drop the boys and get pushed back a little bit. You're gonna regret hurting them. Raditz rushes towards Jiren and their fight begins. Eventually, Piccolo and the androids are all knocked out of the ring by the pride troopers combining their power to beat them. And Cooler actually ends up meeting Frost, but he transforms into his golden form immediately and knocks him off. Cooler being on his own, he's actually knocked off some of the universes a lot quicker. And at this point, Universe 6 and 7-Eleven are the only ones that are still in the tournament at this moment. And the fights are really getting heated and Zeno is very impressed. Goku and Vegeta rushes over to Gohan and Trunks to help them up and they're actually okay. Another power from before shoots up into the air and this is when Kefla makes herself known. Kaba runs over to Vegeta but before he could reach him, Tupo kicks him off the ring. Vegeta wants to get revenge for this and he tries to rush in at Topo, but Kefla kicks him out of the way and she strikes him in his face, sending Vegeta flying. He then proceeds to try to go for Gohan and Trunks and as she approaches them, Goku stands in front of her with his arms crossed, but Topo flies towards him and attacks him, but Goku blocks the attack. Vegeta rushes towards Kefla with his Super Saiyan Blue form and their battle starts. Kefla is more superior than Vegeta in his form right now because she's in her legendary Super Saiyan form. And this allows her to beat Vegeta up. Because of all the fighting Vegeta has done in the tournament already, he's really tired. So he falls out of his Super Saiyan Blue form and Kefla taunts the prince. Kefla then walks over to Gohan and Trunks once again and she punches them in their gut and Vegeta watches this happen while he's on the ground and Kefla shoots a blast at them making them fly off the ring. Vegeta watches the whole thing and he reaches his breaking point because of this and he screams out loud and a white and pink aura surrounds his body and his hair changes into a brighter shade of pink. Vegeta stands up and Kefla sends a dozen of blasts at him but none of them phase him. She grits her teeth and charges at him to attack him, but Vegeta knees her in the stomach and hits her with his elbow in her face. Kefla then tries to go in and hit Vegeta with some more attacks, but none of them works and he just ends up beating her up. Kefla then goes on top of a rock and charges up a blast to blast Vegeta away. When she shoots the attack of Vegeta, Vegeta charges up a blast of his own and he screams out, Divine Gallic Gun! And a shiny light peak beam blasts towards Kefla's attack and it completely consumes it, then her, and she's sent off the platform. Vegeta falls to his knees and breathes heavily and returns back to his base form. Top is having a harder time than what he would have expected fighting Super Saiyan 4 Goku and he admits that Goku is stronger than what he expected. But he is going to beat Goku for what he has done to his pride troopers because this is justice. Goku laughs at this, your justice means nothing to me and he kicks Topo away. Cooler then appears and he takes over Goku's fight. Hey what are you doing? I was fighting him. Cooler smirks at Goku and he rushes towards Top and he begins to pummel him. As Cooler is being Top, he tells him that he's weak and the rest of the Pride Troopers are nothing to him. Cooler then proceeds to shoot a dozen of Death Beams towards Top and while this is happening, Top makes up his mind. A purple aura envelops his entire body and Baramon smirks. It's about time. The Supreme Kai of Universe 11 tells everyone that Topps is in line to become the next god of destruction for Universe 11. And everyone is in shock at this and Beerus starts to laugh. Top answers his destruction forms and Beerus smiles. This will be nothing to him. And everyone is confused by the statement that Beerus just made except for Whis. Cooler shoots death beams at Top once again but they do absolutely nothing to him. Top then rushes towards him and absolutely destroys Cooler. Cooler is nothing to Top at this moment and Top sends him off the arena with a destruction wave. Goku is beyond happy at this because now he can show his new power. Once Cooler flies off the ring, Top directs his gaze towards Goku and Goku smirks. Your new power is nothing compared to mine. Every single destroyer is confused at this because what is stronger than destruction? Beerus begins to laugh. Goku releases his power and lets out a scream. Top holds out his hand and forms a Hakai wave to shoot towards Goku before he could finish transforming. 
A purple electricity shoots out of Goku's body, and his hair turns completely purple. Top launches his Akai wave towards Goku, and the blasts envelop his whole body, but he isn't destroyed. The blast actually sinks into his aura while he's transforming. This can be. He's also the destroyer? Beerus continues to laugh at the other destroyers. Yes, he's my successor, the next Universe 7 destroyer. Goku has finally entered his ultra ego form and he puts a destroyer earring on his ear. Let's see who this better successor is. Top and Goku begins to clash and Goku has the upper hand in this fight. Once they break away from each other, Top begins to shoot Hakai Blast at Goku, but Goku stands there and takes every single blast. Top then dashes towards Goku and Goku appears in front of him and hits him five times in his chest swiftly before Top could even realize that he moved. Then he jumps over him and kicks him into the ground. Goku stands over Top's body and he stumps on his arm, shattering his bones, causing him to scream out in pain. Goku punches his head into the ground and then he continues to stump on his body, sending shockwaves every time his shoe hits Top's body. Top eventually reverts back to his base form and Goku holds out his hand and creates a ball of destruction and blasts Top through the arena, causing it to break apart. Top is then sent back to the stands and everyone is at loss of words because of this. During the fight with Jiren and Raditz, Raditz forms a spirit bomb in the air and throws it at Jiren, but he ends up falling into it. Jiren thinks that Raditz is out of the fight, so he starts to pay attention to Goku. Until a white aura shoots up into the air and immense heat starts to erupt from Raditz's body. Raditz has now entered the Ultra Instinct form. Since Raditz is stronger than when Goku was in the original when he fought Jiren, he actually knows about the Ultra Instinct form also because we told him about it, and he's able to stay in this form a little longer because of this. Raditz dashes towards Jiren and throws a flurry of attacks at him at speeds that Jiren can't match at this time, causing him to get beaten up. Jiren then rips off the top of his shirt, and he starts to be able to fight against Raditz once he boosts his key up. Raditz dodges every attack that Jiren sends at him, but this slowly begins to stop because as the fight progresses, Jiren actually ends up being able to touch Raditz. Jiren grabs Raditz by the hair and he slams him into the ground, cracking the entire arena. Raditz bites Jiren's hand and he causes him to let Raditz' hair go, and Raditz punches him into the tower that is in the middle of the arena. Once Jiren back would hit the arena wall, Raditz rushes towards him with the aura of Ultra Instinct around his hand and he strikes Jiren in the face and this connects. Jiren spits out tons of blood and he starts to talk about his family and his life. Then he screams out and charges up his power, going into his full powered state. Raditz tries to strike Jiren once again, but Jiren catches his fist and he slams Raditz into the ground. The new power of Jiren is too much for Raditz and Raditz is beginning to lose the battle. Raditz tries to charge up his key once again, but as he do, his body gives up on him and a purple lightning shoots out of his body and he reverts back to his base form. Jiren tries to strike Raditz while he's down, but Goku comes to his rescue and he shoots a Hakai wave towards Jiren, causing him to jump away. Well, Jiren, it's me and you now. Jiren begins to rush towards Goku, but Goku flares up his power, causing Jiren to be pushed back. Goku then rockets towards Jiren, and they begin to clash. The power of these two causes shockwaves in the entire arena, and Vegeta and Raditz falls off the rocks, and they actually falls out of the ring and is sent back to the stands, where Whis would heal them so that they could watch the entire fight between Jiren and Goku. Everyone from Universe 7 begins to cheer on Goku, as does the Universe 11 fires do the same for Jiren. Jiren sends a flurry of attacks at Goku, but Goku is tanking every single one of them, and he's becoming stronger because of this. Goku spits up a lot of blood, and he rips off the top of his gi, and he starts to laugh. This is amazing. You're even stronger than Topo, and he had destructive ki. As Goku continues to talk, one of his eyes turn entirely purple, and he begins to charge up even more of his ki even further. Goku then rushes towards Jiren, and Jiren can't handle the attacks that Goku is sending at him. Jiren throws a key wave at Goku, but Goku breaks through it and he strikes Jiren directly in his face. Before Jiren could catch his ground, Goku forms a destructive Kamehameha and he shoots it at Jiren. And Jiren holds the attack back and even pushes it back. But Goku adds more destructive energy into it and Jiren is finally blown away and sent back to Universe 11. 
The Grand Prix announces that Universe 7 is the winners of the Tournament of Power, and the Grand Prix grants Goku with the wish from the Super Dragon Balls because he's the last fighter standing and he's actually the MVP. Goku begins to smile, and he wishes for Planet Vegeta to be brought back to life. Raditz and Vegeta are left wide-eyed because of the wish Goku just asked for. Grand Prix allows Goku to wish for this, and the three younger Saiyans question Goku's wish because they've never heard of a place named Planet Vegeta. Each of the younger Saiyans look at Vegeta. Why is a planet named after you? Vegeta tells the boys that the planet Vegeta is where the Saiyans are from. And that's where him, Raditz, and Kakarot are born at. The dragon is summoned. And Goku speaks his wish to the dragon. And he revives the planet. Once the Saiyans arrive to Earth, Raditz, Vegeta, and Goku teleport to planet Vegeta to meet the Saiyans. Everyone on the planet is in shock because they're brought back to life. Raditz and Vegeta hover above everyone, and one of the Saiyans scream out, Is that Bardock and King Vegeta? But Bardock and King Vegeta are amongst the crowd. No, they're over there. Bardock looks into the sky, and he sees Kakarot and Raditz, and he feels a warmth in his heart because he sees that his sons are together and still alive. Prince Vegeta decides to transform into a Super Saiyan, and the rest of the Saiyans are in shock of seeing this because they have never seen an actual Super Saiyan in person. King Vegeta is extremely happy, and the prideful Saiyan screams out, My son is a Super Saiyan. He's the myth and legend that we've all told our children. He's right before us, Prince Vegeta. Many people in the crowd start to suspect that Vegeta must have been the one to restore their home and bring them back to life. One of the Saiyan followers screams out, With this new power, the Saiyans will pillage the universe in no time. Nobody would be able to stand against us, not even Frieza. The crowd roars and praises Prince Vegeta. This angers Vegeta because the people have no shame. They have no regards for anybody else but themselves. Vegeta screams out at the crowd to listen up and be quiet. Frieza is dead, and I wasn't the one to kill him. The same that killed him is the same one that brought you all back to life, and he's next to me. Kakarot flies in front of Vegeta, and Vegeta stands on side of him. I am Kakarot. The Elite Saiyan Warrior, son of Bardock and Gine, and younger brother of the Elite Saiyan Raditz. I am the one who originally killed Frieza and brought you all back to life. Bardock is extremely happy from hearing Goku say this, and Gine begins to cry because our son has accomplished a lot. But many other Saiyans don't really believe Goku, and the king and his followers scream out that he's a liar, and Vegeta was going to say something, but Goku puts his arm out and he tells him that it's okay. Goku proceeds to transform into the Super Saiyan form so many people can believe him even more. After Goku transforms, the crowd begins to grow silent because they thought Vegeta was the only Saiyan to be able to wield this power. Goku proceeds to tell the other Saiyans that if they think he's lying, to fly up and test his power. Then he'll show them how truthful he actually is. Goku then begins to let out a scream and shake the entire place. And he transforms into a Super Saiyan 4. The entire crowd is bewildered at this because they never seen or felt any kind of power like this. They even suspect that Goku is stronger than Prince Vegeta. Once nobody goes up to Goku, he begins to tell the Saiyans that they will have to change their ways. Or else he will destroy this planet and they will just never exist again. Goku holds up his hand and creates a supernova to scare the Saiyans even more. After this show of power, Vegeta and the rest of the Saiyans finish their speeches and Vegeta takes the throne from his father and he's now King Vegeta, the new ruler of Planet Vegeta. Vegeta soon moves his family to Planet Vegeta and now their new home is that planet. She is excited to live there because now she's a queen and the Saiyans all accept her even though she's an earthling. Goku tells Bardock and Jinae how he has a family on earth and Raditz does the same. Jine is beyond happy to meet Bulma and Launch and her grandkids. Bardock and Jine even moves to Earth with Raditz and their family, and they start their new lives there. And Bardock trains with his grandsons and his sons. Back on planet Vegeta, Vegeta gains inspiration from the Galactic Patrol, and he decides that he'll create his own police force to help protect the universe and give the Saiyans a better name for themselves. The Saiyans are no longer planet brokers, and they aren't interested in destroying or taking over planets. The new interest that the Saiyans have is protecting planets and making peace treaties with other civilizations all over the universe. The way the Saiyans are right now, they're too weak, and Raditz decides that he'll take the initiative to help train most of the Saiyans to become a Super Saiyan. Vegeta also steps in and does his part with the training. Bardock eventually becomes a Super Saiyan because he frequently trains with Raditz and Goku. 
During a sparring session between Goku and Bardock, Bardock asked Goku, has he ever visited the planet Vampa he told him about when he was younger? And did he fight Broly to see who was the actual stronger saying? And Goku becomes really quiet because he's forgot all about that guy and that place. Bardock face palms, and they fly over toward Vegeta's castle, and Goku asks Vegeta for a ship with the coordinates for a place called Planet Vampa. Vegeta questions why Goku would want to go there, and Goku tells him to save a saying that nobody has heard of for a while, and Vegeta wants to go along with the two. As their pods enter the atmosphere, Paragus sees them flying in the air, and he grits his teeth. Why now at all times would they decide to come finish us off after all these years? Why would they remember us all of a sudden? Paragus screams to Broly to go and catch those pods and kill whoever's in them so that they can steal their pods and leave this desolated place. Broly isn't really listening to Paragus and Paragus has to activate his shock collar, shocking Broly. And Broly rockets off towards the sky and he catches Goku's space pod first. Goku smirks. You must be Broly. Goku sees the anger in Broly's face and he busts out of his space pod blowing it up. Broly swats the smoke out of his face from the exploding space pod and he rushes towards Goku. Broly rushes in to punch Goku, but Goku blocks his attack. Wow, you wanna fight already? Goku pushes Broly off of him and he punches him in his face, sending him flying towards the ground. Once Vegeta's and Bardock's space pod lands on the ground, they look up to see the craziness that is happening right before them. Paragus sees Vegeta, and he becomes beyond angry. Is that the prince? Broly, get him now! Broly rushes towards Vegeta, and Vegeta blocks his attack as well. The way that Broly just struck Vegeta was beyond harder than when he struck Goku. Paragus looks at Bardock, and Bardock tells him, what is he doing? We're here to help you. Paragus asks Bardock, why does he look so young? And Bardock tells him, because we died. We just became back to life. Paragus looks in shock. And Barak tells him how Frieza destroyed their planet. But now he's dead, so they don't have to worry about him anymore. And that Vegeta is now the king of the Saiyans, and the old Vegeta does not rule anymore. And his ways are changed, because Vegeta has changed the ways of the Saiyans. Paragus feels a little relieved that Frieza isn't around anymore, but he still has disdain for King Vegeta. And he still thinks that he should have paid for what he's done to him, because they've been on this planet for way too long. Bardock tries to change Paragus' mind, and he sees the remote in his hand. He asks him, what is this? Paragus tells Bardock what it is, and Bardock thinks this is wrong. But he also understands, because it's the only way to control Broly's power. Goku overhears Paragus say this, and he destroys the remote. Because he thinks that Broly's power shouldn't be controlled by any gadget, and that Broly should be able to harness it like any other sand. Paragus lets out a scream. And Broly is still fighting Vegeta, and he's growing steadily. But now that he's off of the shock collar, he grows his power even larger, and he transforms into his Akari state. Vegeta goes straight into Super Saiyan God once he realizes that Broly is getting the upper hand on him. Vegeta kicks Broly into the ground, and Broly is sent through the middle of Planet Vampa. Paragus is beyond shocked at this, because Vegeta's power has completely disappeared. But he's also very strong, because he's able to do that to Wrathful Broly. Earthworm Ba comes out of the ground and tries to strike Vegeta, but Vegeta moves out the way and he strikes it and disintegrates it with a blast. Broly watches this happen and he begins to lose control even more. Paragus tells Goku this is why he wanted to keep him under that collar, and Broly lets out a scream and transforms into a Super Saiyan. But Broly doesn't stop there, he continues charging up till he enters his legendary Super Saiyan form, and his hair is now green and he's huge. Broly rushes towards Vegeta and strikes him in his stomach as Vegeta is sent flying into a mountain. Broly begins to rush towards that mountain and pummel Vegeta inside of it. Vegeta is getting destroyed at this point because Broly has fully lost it and he transforms into his Super Saiyan evolution state but this does nothing. His power is nothing compared to Broly as of this point and he's still trying to fight him off. Goku watches this happen and Bardock tells him that he knew Broly had something special and Goku agrees with him. Goku transforms directly into his Super Saiyan God Force state, and Paragus is also confused at this because Goku looked completely different. Goku teleports in front of Vegeta, and he kicks Broly away. Goku tells Vegeta that it's his turn to fight now because he's been getting beat up for way too long. Raditz teleports to the planet, and he appears next to his father to see what's going on because he felt Goku power raise up out of nowhere. Bardock informs Raditz on the entire situation, and he sees Goku fly towards Broly. 
Broly rockets off towards Goku, and Goku strikes him in his face, and Broly sends another attack towards Goku. But Goku catches his fist. Goku does the attack that he did to Broly in the original, and Broly is completely stuck. Goku tells Broly that he's really strong, and he would like to fight and train with him so that he can harness this power for good, and not have to be controlled by his father. Broly begins to break out of Goku's restraint, and he screams out loud, and he lets out a giant mouth beam. But Goku rockets behind him, and he chops him in the neck. But Broly doesn't knock out. He grabs Goku by the hair, and he slams him on the ground, and he begins to stomp on his body. Goku spits out blood, but when Broly tries to stomp on him once again, Goku moves out of the way, and he surrounds his fist with Ki, and he begins to pummel Broly. Broly is sent flying across the planet with each punch that Goku sends towards him, and now he's losing the fight. Once Goku knocks Broly into the air, he teleports under him, and he grabs his leg, and he rushes down back to the planet and slams Broly down. With this attack, Broly is now knocked out, and they all return back to planet Vegeta. But before they leave, Vegeta tells Paragus that if he holds any grudge towards him and tries anything else like this, he will die, along with his son Broly. Paragus understands what Vegeta is saying, and he decides to let the grudge go, because the Saiyans have changed, and he can live a better life now. Paragus lives among the Saiyans on planet Vegeta, and Broly also lives there. Vegeta allows Broly to be one of his guards, and he also frequently trains with him alongside Goku to help Broly master his power. Goku has also gained more control over his godly destruction power. He frequently trains with Beerus and he's also gained a new form. Goku feels that he's strong enough to finally have that rematch with Beerus and their fight begins. Goku goes straight into Ultra Ego Super Saiyan 4 and Beerus charges all the way up and they begin to clash. Grand Zeno appears to watch this fight because it's amazing and he thinks that Goku is really powerful. Goku begins to pummel Beerus, and Beerus can't really do anything to Goku because his power is too immense. Once Goku beats Beerus, Beerus grants him the title of God of Destruction for Universe 7. And Beerus retires. He goes to live out the rest of his days in Universe 6 with Champa. Goku moves to Beerus' planet, but now it's his planet, and Boma and him live there with their family. Eventually, Moro shows up, and Goku just immediately destroys him so that he won't be a threat to the universe. He also helps the planets and he learns more about the galaxy to help their mortal levels rise. And this is where I'll be ending up to the series. Thank you guys for watching, all the support, and everything.